Any of y'all know what this is again? That's right, which is the toot. Just to let everybody know we X-rated. This is the Abarim. This is the Abarim Alabeth, which is the toot, which is our last Alabeth. The X stands for the mark of the signature. Y'all hear me? So we put it here to let them know we X-rated. We'll say what others would dare to say, and we'll go places that never before ever been explored before. Isn't that right? Really down into the hearts and the minds of men. Never done before. That's why people, if people actually been convicted, they'll make changes. People not changing because there's no conviction. They listen to people that got the same failures and incapability that they have, so there's no way to ever be convicted of anything. You got a cigarette smoker trying to talk to other cigarette smokers. You got drunks trying to teach other drunks and child molesters talking to rapers and murderers talking to robbers. So there's no conviction. Everybody among them are thieves. They don't have anybody that qualified to even tell the people what state they're in today. We told them that before, if you look at the presidency, I'm proud of these people. I think America has done a great job in electing Donald Trump. He is the top elite of the best that the white nation has to offer. Well, let me know the rest of them are pure shitum. They have absolutely nothing to their credit. They have shown us the best of the best. He is the elite. He is the brainiac. He is the most brilliant, most astute white man that they have. The rest of them are pure shitum. They need us on this wall. There's no way we're going to function without us. We put the rush here to let them know we are the first and we are the head. We are the captain. Y'all hear me? We're not behind. They are beneath. We are ahead. Y'all got me? I did want to talk to y'all. Um, clear one statement was made yesterday on them. Just letting you see kind of some of the footage that we got. That for me? Oh, okay. A little note. Oh, okay. Oh, turn your Wi-Fi off. How many of y'all got your phones at home? Why is your Wi-Fi on? Why? Explain me why. No reason. Who y'all trying to, what y'all trying to go on the internet? Y'all trying to find something? I got the internet right here. What you want to know? <laughs> what you need to know? I'll tell you right now, what's the answer? You know what the answer is if I don't know the answer. What? Your mama. You be so mad I said something about your mama, you forgot your question. That's the only way to do it. You can clock me in, good man. Thank you, sir. That's it. This is an attempt to collect the debt. Let's, um, hold on for y'all go. A horny goat. We talked about Baphomet, didn't we? When you find the symbol, you will put around now with them. How they do this stuff anyway. This don't come out right. I really don't care. That's it. That's it right now. That's it. That's all I need. That's Baphomet inside. <laughs> That's Baphomet. That's the round you see the horns, you see the star. What's interesting about this, though, what's, what's interesting about this? That's it, ain't it? Hold on, I got to draw the goat by it. Hold on. That's it. That's Baphomet. Um, the name that you're going to find associated with Baphomet, if you ever look at this, and if, and if, and if, are any of you guys familiar with the picture that they use for Baphomet, the five-star point that they use? Well, there's a name you'll find inside of it, and it's actually A-L, or it can be S-A-M-I. I put S-I-M-I-L. It's actually S-A-M-I-L. I mean M-I-L. Um, another name you're going to find associated with it is When you find the penitent, of any of y'all familiar with this name around him? You'll find that um, Samil or Samil 
and you'll find that Lilith. Y'all see that? Beautiful Lilith. Y'all all right? This is the name you'll find here. The reason why you'll find these two names is because you're trying to show actually two characters. This is the male for the masculine because they're going to use this and tell you this is the archangel. This archangel that they're going to tell you is one that's actually, what the Samil is supposed to mean is um, venom of God. It means venom of God or blindness. That's why you need to know this stuff. See, we, we play with these people and you don't know how dangerous these people are that you fool with. Samil is going to mean venom of God or it's going to mean blindness. Now the significance that you need to know that the Catholic Church and the Jewish people teach you this in the um, Talmud. I can't remember. Is it T U M U D L? T of the T Talmud. Yeah, T A L. Where's my pen? This pen. I'm killing my pens. I feel. The Talmud. Is that it? The Talmud, it means to learn. The Talmud. This is a book they're going to use for their robotic priest. That's what the Talmud is going to teach you. It means to learn. The thing you got to watch about the Talmud, the Talmud is supposed to be a copy of our oral. It's actually supposed to be a summary of our scriptures. It's supposed to be a summary of our law, which is going to be oral and some written. So in their teaching, they're going to teach you about Samuel. Samuel is supposed to be an archangel of authority over the seven heavens. Where they get the seven heavens from, don't ask me. You got to go with these people's mystical teaching. And just watch how people come along and, and bewilder you and make a fool out of you. This Samuel, who they're going to teach you about, is supposed to also be the guardian angel of Esau. They believe the Catholic Church, along with these, um, along with these Jewish rabbis, believe that Samuel, this archangel, is supposed to be a messenger. It's supposed to be a, a a messenger of God. His venom, sent for blindness, who also is good and bad. This is their teaching. This is what these people give you for information. Now, when we get down here to Lilith, how y'all like Lilith? Lilith? No, that's not Lilith. The thing you did, yes, sir. Lilith. L I L I T H. Lilith. Exactly. This is their teaching. Lilith is supposed to be Adam's first wife. Adam's first wife. Lilith's name means dark monster. She's supposed to be a monster of the dark. We're going to name our kids Lily. Lily. Anything we can take from these people, we go and take and we get. That's why we got to watch these people. Lily is supposed to be believed to be Adam's first wife before Kaua. Now, we have no biblical teaching of this. There's no record. This is why you can't follow everything people give you. A lot of stuff they'll take, they'll twist, and these white Jewish people will take books and they'll go and twist around. They do the apocrypha and make things seem that they don't and don't exist. We have no record of teaching of a woman that was here before Ka'ua. Ka'ua name is life-giving. They believe that she was put out of the garden because she would not obey Adam. This is their teaching. This is why you got to watch these people. Baphomet will have both of these names because they would symbolize two people, a male and a female. This is why you got to watch these people. When you look at Samil, you'll also find him being called the accuser for Satan. It will be called the accuser. In the book of uh, Kazum, 12, 12 and 1. They're going to call it Revelations. But what we need is a revolution. A month. Kazum. 
which is means visions. 12 and 1. Listen. And there appeared a great wonder in Shamayim, a Nashim clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in Shamayim, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of Shamayim, and did cast them to the Aritz. Yes. And the dragon stood before the Nashim, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Listen. And she brought forth a, a noose child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto Allahim and to his throne, and the Nashim fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of Allahim Listen. that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score yamim. Come on. And there was war in Shamayim, Mikya, and his Malachi fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his Malachi and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in Shamayim. Listen. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole Aritz, he was cast out into the Aritz, and his Malachi were cast out with him. Listen. And I heard a loud voice saying in Shamayim, What did it say? Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our Allahim, and the power of his Mashiach, for the accuser of our Aki is the cast male. down. The accuser. The accuser. Samil. At the book of uh, Yehuda. Yehuda 1 and 5. They'll call it Judah. Make it one in about six. Yahuda. Listen. And the Malachi, which kept not their first estate. And the Malachi, which the Malachi, which means his messengers, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. And did what? He hath reserved into everlasting chains. That's why I told you about the dragon and about how he took him down with his tail. Where's the tail at? Behind, which means they followed him. It was only telling you that they followed him. He took him down with his tail because they followed. Even Yahushua told you, let them alone, for they be what was again? Blind? Leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, what's going to happen? Blindness. Samil. Blindness. A blind was leading the blind. And now all of them sat down in a bottomless pit. Listen. He hath reserved in everlasting chains. See that? Unto Kashak. Listen. Unto the in judgment. In obscurity. Listen. Unto the judgment of the great Yum. Listen. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, uh -huh. suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Yes. Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, yes. despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Listen what happened. Yet Michael, the Ark Malachi, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Masha. Listen what happened. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation. The accuser. Now you can see why he'll have a title as the accuser. When he was disputing with him, that's all, the, that's all Samir doing is just bringing him accusation. He bringing up stuff, but he does, he does not bring up a rather accusation. But what did he tell him? But said, Yahuwah, rebuke thee. Reprimand you sharply. Reprimand you sharply. See, all these disciplines we learn, a lot of things people do because the people are blind. That's the whole purpose of him coming. Give me the book of Oriah. They're going to call him Luke.
4 and 16. Wonderful Husha. Amat. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Amat. Not a man. We follow these people long enough to do a lot of damage to ourselves. And now our eyes are coming open. We're becoming illuminated to the truth. We're starting to watch the people that have given us this, this stuff. That's amazing you find that star with them five points on it. If you look on their flag, every one of these stars got five points on them. You watch the Jewish people, they got the five star point. Everybody, they all follow the same symbol. Islam, every one of these people, they the same stuff. Every man, he actually come from them. Mystical stuff. People don't realize these Egyptians have given us a lot of mystical creatures. We follow a lot of stuff from their mermaids and everything they got. These lying bastards ain't never seen no woman with no titties, no fish bottom on it. Ain't caught one of them yet, huh? Got niggas walking around looking for unicorns. If you look it up, they will be talking about an ox. Those are the animals that have horns, not in the middle of their forehead. But they give you stuff to make a fool out of you. These white people have never known our doctor. It's not their book. Everything was left to them to speculation. So they just looked at them. There are people that come up with medieval, they're in a medieval time when they took our book to even translate. So you can expect them to come up conjuring up this foolishness. Teach you about dragons. When you seen a dragon? A lot of times you find these names they put there because they didn't know what it was. You can't believe everything these people tell. They've done a lot of damage to us. They left our people stuck in Christianity. And that's why we dying. Huh? At the book of Husha. Four and six. They're going to call him Jose. Jose, as I know, either was Mexican or drunk. Jose Wynn was a drunk. Listen. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Back my back four and one, please. Why does it might sound like that? Y'all still playing with it back now? I'm doing adjustment. Thought that Brandon got a cold. I want to hit him in the nose already. How many of y'all would like to hit Brandon in the in the nose? Good. Listen. Hear the Dabari of Yahuwah. Oh, that's it. That's it. Sound worse now. Keep it up. How do you go so far worse? Then eventually it's got to come back right. Man, it sound like he congested. Which way are you going? Go the opposite way. Go ahead. Hear the dabari of Yahuwah. Yep, that's the children of Yahshua. Keep, eventually it's got to get better. I'm not Yelling, listen, good can come from evil. <laughs> Let these people tell it right. Listen. Hear the dabari of Yahuwah. Ye children of Yasharon. Yeah. For Yahuwah hath a controversy with thee, with the inhabitants of the land. What happened? Because there is no Amat. Y'all see no that? mercy. He looking, there's no Amat. There's no truth. He got a problem. Where is truth at? Look at it. Truth is falling dead in the street. And the book said when he saw it, he abhorred it. Where is it at? Amat been slain in the street. These people don't want, why do you think they keep gunning our people down, the so-called Negro on the street? They're not gunning down the white men, they're gunning us down. They know we the truth. Listen, they are just coming up just the other day with scientific proof that they've gone through, which is an era of 10,000 years they're trying to count the white man of being here. Do y'all not know these scientists are still trying to figure where white people come from? Okay. Of course they ain't going to tell you, because they can't prove it. They know it's a genetic mutation. That's all they talk. They say it's a small genetic mutation that these people have stemmed from possibly 10,000 years ago. They got, listen, they got uh, boards of people commenting, researching, great doctors and historians trying to find out exactly where white people come from. White people won't tell you that. They don't know. They know their lives are playing out. It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense when you try to explain it. 10,000 years don't make sense because the Ritz hadn't been here 10,000 years. Five million years, ice age don't make sense. So if the earth been here five million years, it was a freeze out, people died, people gone, come back, and you only been here 10,000 years. Well, what was here before you? Then how did we get beneath you? 
Whatever kind of sense they're going to use, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. So you only been here 10,000 years, but you don't gave the earth 5 million years of ice age, ice age freeze. Who was here to count it? Who was here to record it? Everything you got for some odd, start, some odd reason you are taught to believe, even by these so-called Negro leaders, are training us to believe that everything we got, we got from white people. I don't know why people keep thinking everything they got from white people. White people got the information from us. There are things that we got from other nation, we enhanced it. We took on embalming from the Egyptians. There are things we took from some other nations. We took on having a ruler over us as the other nation. But we enhanced it. We perfected everything we got from it. Any sport, that's why anything they got, they show it. We get it. We're going to perfect it. Huh? If it's an instrument, we're going to play it better than you ever heard it played before. If it's a running sport, we're going to run it better than you ever seen it ran before. We're going to swim it better than you. Anything you got, we're going to show you because we've been here. They ain't taught us nothing. When it comes to armies, troops, whatever it's been, they've never taught us anything. We've always had abundance of things. We lost when we intermingled with these people. We've lost an estate when we mingled with these people. Mixing with these people have put us to the same equivalent as you taking something pure and you starting to put water in it. The more water you put in it, the weaker it's going to become. The more we are mixed in with these people's doctrine, these people's behavior, these people's science, and these people's literature, the weaker we have become. We've taken on these people's medication, of which they've conjured up, they took from Mizraim. That's why they show you the staff with the two snakes on it. They even tell you in the movie, when they made the movie of Moses, how Pharaoh and Egyptians threw down, and they made two snakes. Then everybody in the medical field, they get them a stethoscope, they get them a lab jacket with it, and two snakes. Showing you, we learned this in Mizraim. These are the practices of the Egyptians. And now we're using them again on you. The Egyptians were the first people who are Mizraim, and we call them Mizraim because that's the seed they come from. They won't be known by their region. We're going to call them by their father's name. They are Mizraim. We always refer to them as Gentiles. They are a nation that are not of the Abari. Don't mix and mingle these people in with us. You're who are told, I serve you from these other nations. <laughs> Let's finish this up. Four and two. Where you left off at? Continuing to verse one. Listen. Because there is no amount, nor mercy, nor knowledge of Allahim in the land. Yeah. By swearing and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery. By what now? By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Y'all see that? That's what happening now. We're killing one another because of the lying and the swearing, the oath, these commitments we made with these people. He's swearing we did. We made oath with these people. And these oath got us in a lot of trouble. We made a lot of bad commitments. And now these things coming back, we're paying for them now. We mix and mingle in. At first, it became a mixing in of people because of race. Because you were trying to keep the bloodline pure. You actually were. When you come back to look, that's why you'll see a lot of breaking off, a lot of separate. It was to keep a bloodline pure. There were people that came in. When you came and mixed and intermingled with us, you were going to have to keep the same tradition and behavior. Y'all got me? Well, our bloodline has always been tainted. It's always been tainted because in order to multiply, we had to mingle in and mix with other people as well. When we came out of Mizraim, we came out a mixed multitude. Everybody that came out of Mizraim was not of Abari. But we've already seen the signs of grafting in. Y'all got me? We saw grafting in, but grafting in happened through behavior. It grafting in came in by, by an acceptance. You had to have a belief system. You had to keep the same law, statute, commandments that we kept. If you were going to be among us, you said, well, that's for y'all, then you were not one of us. Our law taught that you should have one manner of law for you as well as for the stranger. One manner of law. Anybody ever going to be grafted in with us wanted to keep all of the same ethics and codes that we kept. If you did not, then we were to separate from you. This thing was going to become a snare to us. That's why we're in the trouble we're in now. When you look at why we're sitting here now, and every time you go see these four colonels, all of them resemble. Even they all resemble. 
because they teach us and they keep us sitting down. Yet when Nakum Yah spake to the people, the people stood. The people stood. We show our inability when we sat down. We come to these places to dress up so we can sit down and look cute, look fashionable, and go to hell. Go right back to the same servitude of a slave master. Again, I told you, I have no master. Other than Yahusha, which is Yah's salvation. Other than Yahuwah, who is the father, we call the Abba. I have no master. Y'all hear me? These have no master. These people are not our masters. Y'all hear me? Their rock is not our rock. Y'all hear me? That's why we've been weakened down. That's why we've been taken. Look at, look at us as a society. All the stuff these people concerned about and run, but nobody's concerned about the welfare of our people being gunned down at the hands of these cricket bastards. It's not even newworthy. The mere fact that these people are not convicted and these people are let to go home. These people can go to jail and burn out in 20 minutes after killing an unarmed black man. And you're not looking at you just took a viable part out of the family structure of our people. And you keep saying it does not matter. When you take that strong man out of the house, you can bind the house. A woman has never been set to be no strong man. No more than a man been set to be a mother. You need both of these units in order to create or procreate. These people have made a fool out of us. They will never let you go and take some out of the white home. Nothing. You will be deemed a robber, a terrorist, an enemy combatant. You will be chased down and killed and anybody with you if you should touch one of these great white lily hopes they got. But they come in your house all the time. You who have told us about him, Yahushua, the thief. He coming to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Look at the home of the Negro. It is dilapidated. He does not even know his home is in trouble. The Negro sits in his house and his house on fire and nobody's even told. He smells smoke. He still sat there and calls it a barbecue. The woman looks like the man and the man looks like the woman. The woman will go and work and will slay and the nigga will lay home. Huh? The children will run the house and will disrespect the parents. The kids would go and join a gang just so they would have something to connect to. Huh? So they can find a friend and they can't be and they have been taught to find a friend in Yahushua. I will tell her there's a friend. He that has friend must first show himself what? Not a flunky. Anything you join, they gotta beat on you, make you have sex, make you drink something, is not a friend. He said, show yourself friendly. That's right. And he said, there is a friend that stick closer than an Aki. You ain't got no friend because you don't went here and took off your clothes and had sex with these people. Right. You ain't no friend because somebody done drew something on your done arm or stapled something on you or beat you or paddled you right. or made you walk around naked. That ain't your friend. That's your enemy. That's, right. That's to your shame. Yeah. But when you've been conditioned and you've been put out and you don't have a relationship or understand how a relationship works, it's easy to gravitate to anything. It's easy to gravitate. You'll look at a person, wonder how a person get on crack. Go back and look at their family structure. Look at any you find an alcoholic or drunk. Go find a murderer. Anybody you find, if you go back through the family structure, you can see the problem. That's why they send you out of these psychiatrists. Most of your psychiatrists are white. Because they need to go ahead and they need to keep paperwork on you and make tabs on it. How was your family like growing? So they can go back and have data they can send back to their white masters and let them know the plan's still working. The execution of the plan is still working. The effect is still here. The drugs that they gave our forefathers, we are the children and the recipients of those drugs. We have come out to become the failure behind those drugs that they gave our forefathers. When they pulled them from the fields and they fed them no bad foods and that didn't take them down and they told them they need to see a doctor so they can take care of their health. And they wound up being more tired than mine. They know when they gave them shots, it was, not set to create, it was not set to kill them. It was set to kill us. It was set to weaken us. Take away our survival code and our skills. Then put you in the concentration camp where they can educate you in the school system and they can keep breaking you down. That you'll look at a foe and call him a friend. Something's wrong with your mindset. Man come and run at me with guns, shooting blades, and I said, that's my boy. That's my nigga there. That's my friend. He coming to help me. Not shooting at me. 
not gunning me down. We've been disenfranchised. Huh? A lot of these businesses out here that's operating, that's functioning today, are functioning off the backs of us, our fathers, our mothers. Huh? And we've got nothing from these people. Now we come back and we buy service from these people that we created. These people have watched the learner. These folks ain't never know how to cook. All they start all these bastards know how to do is eat raw broccoli, yeah. carrots, yeah. Cin cin uh, celery sticks. Yeah. Huh? That's all that cauliflower. Yeah. Yeah. Them bastards have set it out like it's a meal. Yeah. You say, what is this garbage? Right. Where are the collard greens and the turkey necks at? Yeah. <laughs> Man, you ain't got no rump roast or nothing in here? No black eyed peas? No cornbread. They conditioned, took everything away from us. Everything they see us ever try to create and make our own, they take and rob it from us. They'll demonize rap music. Rap music causes violence. It, it glorifies um, poor living in bad communities. No, rap music sends a message. This is what's happening in my neighborhood. I see hoes and pimps. I see drug dealers. I see shooting, survival. I see gangs. I see police coming, kicking in doors, blasting and killing niggas, and I'm going to shoot back. Now they say we got to stop it. We gotta, it's all right if you talk about the hoes and the drugs, but don't talk about us coming in and doing nothing to you. And please don't alert your people to start saying to defend themselves. I need to get your music out of him. But then we ask ourselves, what music was he listening to when he built the good ship Jesus? When he got off the boat in the other regions of Africa and he started capturing people that were free. Exactly what music was he listening to? And what music were playing when you brought them back and you took them off the ship and you put them on the auction block in Charleston? When Plymouth Rock landed on them in Savannah, Georgia. Exactly what music was you listening to in Louisiana? Nobody asks these questions. What music is this white man listening to now when he pulls you over and he guns you down and you aren't on? What music is he playing? He's singing some song because it's the same song. It's the same song. But nobody ever asks these questions. What music are these white people listening to? God, duty, and country. That's the problem. These people have never broke off from the discipline of their English. Their God comes from got. As English often does, they change their own lettering and they say it, God. But to show you they hadn't forgot, when they get upset, for whatever reason, they'll say, God damn you. He never says, God damn you. I've never heard anybody say, God damn you. They say, God damn you. Because they never broke off from their discipline. Their discipline is why we're dying. And you got to ask yourself, all these years, why hadn't anybody sat down to tell us this? Because when I heard years ago, they say, God damn, they said, you just took the Lord's name in vain. You say, oh my goodness, I didn't mean it. I couldn't figure how. I said, well, I thought it was God, but apparently I said God. Because God and God are the same devils. These are creativities of your master. If these men, being one, were of any good, we wouldn't be in this hellhole we was in today. The problem that faced you and I, we wouldn't be suffering. If God and God meant us any good. When they told us, God damn you, is because they were giving homage to their God, asking their God to do damage to you. Now we tell them, y'all damn you. Huh? So we have the only Allahim. We don't have a God. We have an Allahim. Which means the mighty one. One, because it's only one. 
They have multiple gods. Y'all hear me? These people have multiple gods. From Baphomet to any other thing they make up. They don't know who they're going to serve. White people make up gods that they're going, they pick them up. They got a Christmas tree god. They got a Santa god. These people have more gods you're going to ever count to and ever have. And they use them in spirit. Well, they use them at their convenience. They got a guard that go around and shoot, put people in the behind for Valentine's Day. A naked baby shooting you with an arrow. Another mystical creature, them and naked kids are always synonymous. Whenever you get a bunch of these white folk together, some kid or some man finna get naked. It's always damaging for us. At some point, we gotta start to realize this. They keep coming into our camp and our village and they're taking men and women from us because they're trying to decrease the numbers. They already have a plot and a plan to come and get you. But they know in order to do that, as Yahuwah told Gideon, the people are yet still too many. It's too many of us right now. He knows his number is less than our number. So he keeps lessening the numbers with alcohol, party, Christmas time, you'll get drunk, he'll make you get eggnog, he'll make you get up on the mistletoe and tell a lie. Make a fool out of it all the time. You go get a mistletoe and put a nail in and see what happens. You should hear the sound of boom. These people just make a fool out of you. You ain't going nowhere, nigga. Why you think you go over that mistletoe, you going to the moon? You ain't going nowhere until you see stars. Quit letting these folk make a fool out of you. Get your own mind and your own identity. Don't be afraid to be who you are. You're who have made you for a purpose. The same way he made this man. He has made this man to be a destroying weapon for him, but at the end, he's going to come back and destroy the weapon. He put these people here to vex us because we turn from the true Allahim. Know why you here and why you set in this situation. Don't go running behind some Negro leader because he's going to tell you to assemble yourselves and go, what's the plan? We're going to go to the White House Monday morning and standing up on in front of our, we're going to go to the Washington Monument and we're going to stand under the nuts of Abraham Lincoln and let him piss over the top of us and sing free at last, pee at last. Thank God Almighty, I've been pissed on at last. Yeah. Then we're going to shout and sing and rumble and come back while they count up the dollars that they made off of us. Right. While they sat back and encaged us around with security, yeah. with guns, while you sat there unarmed, talking to a piece of rock yeah. that's pissing on you, yeah. along with his sons and daughters that are pissing on you. And come back to our job that we call this actually slavery. And hope that white people acknowledge us when we came and got pissed on. And will do something for us. Anything that's going to happen for us has to happen at our hands and at the hands of Yahuwah. I'm against marching. I see no purpose in marching and you unarmed. If you're going to do something, there needs to be some type of retribution behind it. Y'all hear me? We're losing people daily. Mass number. The news can't record all these people they're killing. They're not going to record all these people being kidnapped because they can't ever let you know what's going on. You ain't even know nothing about they kidnapping men right now, raping them. Homosexual gangs are raping you. Men are being at ease. You hadn't heard one arrest of these homosexual gangs or infiltration of them or that the feds are working on trying to get them or some type of counterterrorism that's trying to catch these guys that are, that are kidnapping men and raping them. They're trying to get ready for ISIL. They're trying to get ready for all these other groups that they've created and they formulated to get you thinking and get you worried and get you frantic and get you scared and get you agreeing on bills and spending that they can get more troops and more police and more security to house and keep you in. You are the people they're afraid of. They're not afraid of these people. They fun. They fun of these people. They sat these people. How smart can you be? Every time you blow up, you sit in a newspaper. All you got to do is trace the envelope. Where the envelope come from? What post office brought it? What did you email it? All you got to do is just check, this, I just check the server, find out where it came from. It ain't hard to catch it. You ain't too bright. Every time you do something, you send an email or a letter. You make a video. 
You ain't that hard to catch. But that's what they tell you. That's not hard it was to go and catch the game that they so-called call a game in Philadelphia and drop the bomb on. What was it in 1985? In 85, they dropped the bomb on in Philadelphia. Took out 70 homes just to kill 11 people. 1985, the police did that. Dropped the bomb on the home for 11 people. They had gotten the house, boarded the windows, built the platform stage, and they started getting out and they started broadcasting on a, a loud, on a speakerphone, started letting people know what was going on in the condition of their people. The police found that to be terrorists. And they did the right thing by the hands of white people. You drop a bomb and you blow the house up. At the same time, you took out 70 more houses, a bomb, in the United States city. And you're going to tell me about the Twin Towers. I said my 11 you killed was just important to 3,000 you claimed you had a white people that were killed. Right. Matter of fact, I tell you, you rid of some people short. Yeah. If your 3,000 number were all white, you still owe me some people. Yeah. You can't account that our people. Those are black men and women. Those were children you took out. Those were future lawyers and scientists for us. Those were future decision makers for us. Future freedom fighters for us. And we are soon we're so safe at hand. Anybody that's going to stand up and be what they're going to call a militant. Somebody that's going to defy their rule because their rule is what's killing us. Huh? Their rule is what's killing. We ain't getting life. It's killing us. And we got to wait on the hands of some white man or some white woman to sign some paper and assure we're going to get another dollar and 50 cent before taxes. Which will come out about 39 cents when they get through. And then we wait another four years and another great cracker going to come in and give us something. At some point, you've got to become disgusted with your situation enough that you look at, there's got to be a way out. You know, even out of maximum security prison, people still trying to escape. Do you know what happened once people escape? Who knows? It can no longer be called maximum security. You cannot define it in maximum security if anybody breaks out. Of course they ain't going to tell you that. You're a nigga. Why would you know that? That's what you pay me for. This ain't nigga news. White people don't want you to know that. So you know what they do? They go back to perfect. Y'all don't remember the movie uh, Escape with Sylvester Stallone? Alcatraz? Who know he drinking right now? No, that was not. In the movie? I don't remember Escape for Alcatraz. Now, he was in some other prison anyway. You probably, seen, you probably think about Clint Eastwood's the way back. Yeah, now I'm on an underground submarine. It was a ship. Dwayne, you're just getting worse and worse. <laughs> Don't worry about it, but you, your heart in the right place, right almost by the center of his chest. That's it. That's the main thing y'all with. Loan your heart in the right place. You can get stuff wrong every now and then. But if you remember what it was, it was putting someone in and to see could he escape. And then find out how did he escape so they could change their area route to keep him from getting out. Well, see, that's the same thing they do with us. Every time they see somebody like me or others that seem to get out or break away, it ain't had to be a financial break. It's just the fact that mentally you break away from them. Then they realize we can't anymore call this maximum security of blacks. Then we got to go in and look at exactly how did he escape. What were the tools used that he used to free his mind and not go along with our God and our Jesus? What can make him say, tell Jesus, kiss my ass? When he told us that Jesus was some type of savior, when Jesus was actually the name of a slave ship. I didn't ask him to tell him, if I told him to kiss my butt, what did I tell him? Kiss my ass. You brought me over here. You sold us out. You lied to us. You degraded. You raped us. You raped our men, our women, and you killed our children. It's an insult to have a conversation with me about Jesus. I will pay R. Kelly $20 to piss on Jesus' birthday. He asked me how I wanted to piss, piss like you pissed on that girl on that video. We're in desperate time. It calls for desperate measures. Any other race will have already organized. Any other race would already have strategized and had come together and realized this has to stop. Marching unarmed is never the answer with dealing with these people. Because they're going to always come to you with arms. They're going to come to you with miniguns. 
Because it's always the fear factor is always what they're going to use. That fear factor they bring when they come in on one person and they surround them with so many guns and all, that, all these commands and throw them on the ground and chain them up. They handcuffs chain. Nothing chains. Still slavery. These, their handcuffs are slave chains. Don't, don't call a handcuff. You keep playing games with your mind that you change. These are nothing but slave chains. Then he come there and say, you, want you so bad, he need to shackle you around your, around your, um, around your um, waist. Then shackle you. This is slave chains. This man had never changed his tactics with you because he see it works. The first chains we got to break are the chains of our minds. We can only do that by properly sitting here and digesting and injecting the word into our hearts. This angers me enough to become free. When I see this without blindness, without Samuel, after I've gotten rid of God's poison, his liquor, his cocaine, his marijuana, everything he gives you, going to put something on it. You want to get some of the best reef you got? Let them give it to you. I used to smoke reef. I used to get it from the white boy. Listen, you hit that stuff and pull it, it won't even stay lit. By the time you realize it ain't lit, you gone. I got to do it, put it from formaldehyde. He can make whatever he want potent. We find out later he was putting stuff in embalming fluid. Who thinks of this? Embalming fluid? Match head, shurn, wet. Pills he cross up. He's notorious for creating something to try to come in and mess up your mind. How many of y'all are never drinkers or smokers? Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. He knew that too. So he decided he'll put it in your food. That's what Yahushua told us. He said, they put poison in my food. So now when you check your food, he find out he put your food in from out of high. Keep it fresh. Your underclothes, everything you got. He's been playing with us for years. He's been using stuff he called preserve. Preserve is something to keep something. That's what the Ruach HaKadah is supposed to keep you. Now to him that's able to keep you from what was it? And present you what? He gave you something to preserve you. Huh? Something that will keep you in a certain state from rotting or changing. Well, he decided to do that with your food. Now, when he puts it in that can or in that bag, and you pop it and you eat it, since it's in a chemical that's taught to keep it and to keep it preserved, when did this chemical stop working? So now it stays large, and it'll stay here large inside your bowel, which eventually will take you out. It'll get you stomach cancer, get you an ulcer, because he know the whole gateway to the body is in the stomach. Everything your body going to take in is just by going to use other you, unless you're going to take it intravenously, it's going to come in through your mouth. And it was just going to go into the belly. And he told you it's supposed to come out in the drought. He read that rhyme. That's why he give you food that don't break down. Because I want you stopped up. See, he does little trigger things that's killing you. It ain't made just enough little trigger things. Because he got people that ain't drinking, ain't going to smoke. So I got to get them with their food. Hmm? I got to get the health nut. Everybody going to run organic? Well, I'm going to put regulation for organic. Anything that got over 10 pounds of chemicals cannot be rated uh, organic. So you can use 9.9 .9 and write organic on it. Organic by whose standard? He growed it. He wrote on it. He ain't never wrote a lot. He ain't never growed a lot. Look at his kids. They liars. The man will write a lot and he'll grow a lot. And then you're going to eat a lot. Now, where is this going to put you at? It's going to make you a liar. Come on, finish this up. We'll finish up this uh, Husha. Four and two. At verse three. At verse three. Listen. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish, with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of Shamaim. Yeah. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yeah. Yet let no anu strive, nor reprove another. Yeah. For thy people are as they that strive with the, with the Kohan. Yeah. Therefore shalt thou fall in the Yum, and the Naba also shall fall with thee in the night. Listen. And I will destroy thy mother. Mm -hmm. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see that? You let us see what the problem is with us. We've been destroyed because of the lack, because of the depletion, because of the scarcity, the shortage of knowledge. Look, why do you think they're able to gun us down and kill us? 
and somebody can come up and tell you to pray at the same time. Somebody tell you to put away our weapons, yet he used a weapon to kill you. How do you fight a man with a weapon with no weapon? How exactly does this work? Explain to me this physical philosophy of go and fight without a weapon, and the person I'm fighting has a weapon. It makes no sense. How am I going to fight this man with no intelligence and this man is using my intelligence to, to sit here and deplete me, which means I need knowledge of my intelligence. Stop letting people make a fool out of you. We have been fooled and played too darn long. And look at our state. The averages are broke and poor and barring. Hoping and trusting, count on and waiting. These are bad premises for the Negro people. White people ain't waiting on nothing. White people got. White people ain't praying to nobody. White people take it. Huh? All the stuff you usually tell you, this is nigga stuff. This ain't for me. They'll tell you, sure, that's for niggas. That ain't for me. Ted Turner told us years ago in the 90s, he said, God, for poor people. That's for poor people. That's who you give it to. You give it to people that sit around, ain't got nothing, and tell them a lie or something and make them sit back and wait on something. That'll never come. Don't you know you like dogs? That nigga done took your shoes. You ain't going home. You done. You're done. Then you're going to go and you're going to ask the wizard how to get home. White man done took my shoes. And I'm going to go ask him how I'm going to get home. The wizard. The wonderful wizard. How can we be any more disgraced than what we already been? We'll still spend with him. We'll still trust him and still respect him. Yeah, he don't respect you. He don't spend with you. What are we going to do to change our condition? I, I just honestly feel like it's an insult when we look at this if our mindset don't change. I refuse to look at this and still go back to depleted, exhausted, famished, raped, disgraced. Because this does not go with that. This go with a people that's going to make a change. Our people are not the people that you think we are. Huh? We're builders. We're navigators. We're ship sellers. We're all kind of people. We're explorers. Huh? We're travelers, world travelers. We done been all over the globe. He got us to reduce. When the floods came in Louisiana and New Orleans, there were people that had never left New Orleans. You know what the purpose that is? Again, showing you the slave set of a mind, the mindset of a slave. Slaves were never allowed to leave the plantation unless it was believed they would return back. When the master left off that plantation with a nigga on that done wagon, that nigga was so happy that master had confidence and trusted him and allowed him to ride with him still was a slave nigga and bring the nigga back. And the nigga thought he was better than the rest of the slaves. That's all we've been. Permission. Asking at the hands of this man. White people don't ask to do nothing, they just do it. You just as much man and human as anybody he gonna ever bring up beside you to try to prove different. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Look at something right quick. Um, Beth. Dabari. Ha Yamin. Yamin. Six. Mm. Let's see what 17 say. Let's see, well, hold, make it 10, I'm sorry. Ho, 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 ho. Disregard. Aleph, Malachi, Malakim. That's right, too. I fact, I should lift it up there. Aleph. Mal Akin. T. 
10, 17. It's all right. I'm not. <clears throat> They'll call it First King. Aleph, Malachim, 10, 17. Listen. And he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pound of gold went to one shield, and the Malak put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the Malak made a great th throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were stays on either side of the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the stays, and twelve lions stood there on the one side and on the other upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom. Come on. And all Malak Shaluma's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. Y'all hear that? Any he had no silver. He ain't made nothing in the house of silver. Listen. It was nothing accounted of in the Yamim of Shaluma. What they actually were trying to tell you, it wasn't nothing to him. When everything go, man, this ain't nothing. Listen. For the Malak had at sea a navy of Tharshish with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tharshish bringing gold. That's what the man looked at. The man had, we already had merchant ships. We didn't gonna call it a navy. We had merchant ships. It was nothing, along with the vessels of Hiram, who sent us in timber and sent us in other goods we got. This stuff was nothing. They came into him every three years. Look what they brought him. Listen. Bringing gold and silver. And what else? Ivory. And what else? And apes and peacocks. Which actually gonna be monkeys. Cool. Cool. That's why you're Allah best. They brought in the coof. See, we imported, exported, traded, brought stuff in. That's how you look at different animals that's over here. This stuff has been moved. They learned from us. They don't show you gorilla that they're native to South America. Well, not necessarily so. You see, well, Hiram brought them in, and they brought them in to him every three years and shipped them in to him. Those and monkeys. Now, would you be shipping in something you already got? You're going to import things you don't have. You export things you don't want or things you have to other people that desire them, like they did the Cubans. They were exported because they weren't wanted. We were imported. They were imported him because these white folks don't know what the shit them they're doing. Right. See, we've always had. This stuff is nothing to us. That's why they look at you in a different light. And they start seeing you jeweling up and putting on gold. They start, getting, they start becoming fearful of you. Because this is stuff they saw. One of your great Malak's already done this. Everything this man had. He had silver now, but he looked at everything going to make, make it go. And then they come and say, man, so you know what he said? Man, this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. We get all excited when you see a rain. You see a braid, a nigga lose their mind. Because white people are making you think you can't have something. Everything they teach you is to deplete you and take stuff away from you. You trying to stay humble. Humbling yourself is going to come with submitting yourself to the will of all ahim. Broke ain't necessarily humbling yourself. The break you need to do is break your ruach that he can come in and give you the right ruach. Which he's going to call. You don't need no done spirit. Stop these man liquor stores. Now his a rail Asian store say it's cheap beer and he does cigarettes as a cigar, cigar rolling paper. Dirty cracker can't sell a cigar, so he's going to give you the wrapper and let you put reef in it. Ain't no nigga came up with busting no cigar open and putting no reefer in it. I always think they originated something. They don't let you go and rap. Why he stopping blunt songs? Because the cigar industry is making billions of dollars off of us. Set nigga a flavor but cigar paper. They kill us every time. Every time they beat us. Why the police ain't going out kicking them A-Rab stores or taking that stuff out of them? 
Because the cigarette industry is making money off of you. Why they ain't going kicking the door in on Newport and R.J. Reynolds? Saddle Creek, place where they house their cigarettes at. People don't even know where Saddle Creek is. That's where they house all their cigarettes at. They think that's a place where horses go and get the darn thing on their back. Saddle Creek is his warehouse. He know he put R.J. Reynolds in, you niggas going to break in there. So he puts up Saddle Creek. Because he riding them niggas. Riding them niggas, shipping them out across the water. Nobody told us nothing. Because you know we don't want to consider. The reality is, it's just like a man white cheating on him. You know what, Leon? I'd rather not know. They counting you be that stupid. Some people rather not know. It's some stuff people tell you. Don't tell me. I don't even want to know. It's some stuff you heard that I just rather not know. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. That's why people don't want to watch and hear the truth. That's why I get you to watch these other fake reality shows. These people sit here fake and conjure up. You sit here and film these people for an hour. You ain't going to find these people doing that. It's a made-up show. But you got people stupid enough, and they can still lie to you and tell you it's reality. That's the dangerous part. The people on the show are the dangerous people. The dangerous people are the people that are watching and actually believe it. Hmm? Believe in a commercial break. Something's going to change when they come back. Go off on a commercial. Oh, it's funny. Exciting, exciting. Oh, what happened the hell? I'm going to sit here and wait. Need to go piss. My kidney about to bust. Now I'm going to be on dialysis. Right. The wait on a lot to come back. Yeah. At what point are we going to wake up? At what point do we become conscious? These people have played us entirely too long. Look at the 11th chapter since we're there, all of them. Malachim, the 11th chapter. I'll get ready to let y'all go in a minute, but right now y'all need to get yourself awake. Oh, you're going to get me, um, ooh, all our shamut, you're going to call it. Shamut. 34. Allah, Malachim, chapter 11, verse 1. Other one got me, ooh, Allah Shamut. He's going to call it Exodus. Meaning absolutely nothing. Man, they did nothing but lie to us every time he gave us something. Even Bar Mata was too stupid to know what he was talking about. Holy Messiah. That wasn't do. That wasn't. And then I make you think he was, he was, man, he was a prophet. That's the problem. He was a prophet. Sue same for God. Got people sitting around getting high unconscious. Wrong message. See, white people are not afraid. They got to make you think you actually done, and then actually tapped into something. The man tell you, hell, Selassie was some leader for you, like you were some fool. We ain't got no leader come out of no Ethiopia. There ain't no leader come out of no Kush. Kush a Gentile. We looking to the man that come out from the seat of Daoud, from the house of the Yahudim. We ain't gonna look for nobody to come out for no doing. Kush, Kush enslaved us. That's crazy. That's crazy. See that in my mind roll. Let me see. Let me see if it's Tahaleen 86 and 1. I don't know. Let me see. My mind going. Y'all work with me a little bit here. Let me see. What that kind of my mind? 86 and 1. We might have to move a little bit. Let me hear what 86 and 1 say. What does it say? Listen. Bow down thine ear, no. O Yahuwah. It's 86, 87. 87 and 1. Let me see. Listen. His foundation is in the Kadash Mountains. Y'all hear what he just told y'all? His foundation where? Is in the Kadash Mountains. His foundation is in the Kadash Mountains. Yes. Yahuwah loveth the gates of Sion more than all the dwellings of Yaakov. Y'all hear that? He loved the gates of Saun, not Zion. We don't know nothing about no Zion. Zion go with lion. These people been lying. The name is Saun. Saun. You have the Saudi, the 
the yard, the um, and the nun are all of bed. These people have lied to us. They made a fool out of us. He told you what he loved. The reason why you're going to find that he loved the gates of Sa Saun because this was actually called the city of Daoud. Since I'll give us reference, we're going to look to. Listen to what he told them. Glorious things are spoken of thee. See that glorious thing? Ain't that spoken good about no cush? Glorious things have been spoken of thee. Listen to what he told you. O city of Allahim. O city of Allahim. What did he tell us? Selah. Yes, I Selah. They Selah, it's, what, S-E-L-A? They don't know what it means. It could possibly mean break, because you're dealing with somebody doing, he's actually the praises. So Selah could actually mean a break or forever. They don't really know what it means. Don't let these people lie to you now. Listen. I will make mention of Rahab and, and Babylon. So I'm going to make mention of them. What happened? To them that know me. Listen. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia, this Anus was born there. See that? He was letting all these other nations know. He told them, I'm going to make mention to these people. All these people know exactly where he born. Would it make sense to tell you the man was born in Ethiopia? These dumb so-called, these Negro smoking crackheads. A sitting around tell you the man was born in Ethiopia, which don't make sense. We just told you his foundation was in the, in the Kadash Mountains. Because when they buried you, when they took Yahushua, they actually put him and they, put, they hung him at the top of Golgotha, which was the place of the skull, which was a skull cap, a high peak of the mountain. He's telling you where his foundation was, which meant that he put Zion in the top of the mountain. He just told you that he loved the gates of Saun. Now, what sense is it going to make to tell you about Zion and tell you, Zion and tell you where it's at and then tell you the man was born in Ethiopia? Can't be that doing stupid. Man was born in Bethlehem, um, Bethlehem, um, Yehuda. Don't make sense to tell you man born no doing Ethiopia. That's just stupid. They don't still go and sing in reggae. People don't know reggae for stupid people. It go along with country music, the rest of it, because we're giving the wrong information. You got to look at it. It's the wrong information. You gonna tell us an Ethiopian man was going with king over us, and that he was from the lineage of Daoud? Hell, Salastes? Black people just stupid. They don't look at nothing. You gonna believe this? Cause they told you that. Cause sorcerer told you. So a sorcerer told you. Where you think they get that from? This man is going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that this man was from the house of Daoud, which made absolutely no sense? Ruler in Ethiopia? That's bad. When we heard a new Ethiopia was going to come down? New Jerusalem. That's the setting foundation of peace, of shalom. Why would we be looking for Ethiopia? I people in bad shape. People in bad shape. Come on, let's look at this. Let's come on back on there. I don't know what we're going to do. Malachim 11 and 1. We're in bad shape. Bad shape. Because somebody singing on a song don't mean, don't mean it ain't a lie. Because it ain't wrote in a book don't mean it ain't a lie. We got to get that out of our mind because you read it don't mean it ain't a lie. You can tell a lie, write a lie, sing a lie. How you think they got us in the condition when too many lies been told? We've questioned nothing. A bald mother going to tell me who the Messiah is. He didn't even know who his daddy was. The mama your man, the, the man your mama slept with. And you going to tell me you know a Messiah? That's crazy. We in bad shape. Listen. But Malak Shaluma loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which Yahuwah said unto the children of Yasharal, What did he tell them? Ye shall not go in to them. What has happened? Neither shall they come in unto you. What happened? For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods, Shaluma, clave unto these in love. And what happened? He had 700 Nashim princesses and 300 concubines, and his Nashim turned away his heart. 
Nashim is the word for women or for a wife. Nashim. Listen. For it came to pass that what happened? When Shaluma was old, what did he do? That his Nashim turned away his heart after other gods. And what happened with his heart? His heart was not perfect with Yahuwah, his Allahim. The book actually lets you know his heart was not at peace. Yeshayahu told us that there is no, no peace to the wicked, said Yahuwah. There's no way to get peace. You know what the problem is with us? Why we don't get into real tranquility? We're not at peace. People talking about being at peace with yourself. You need to be at peace with your creator. That's our problem. A lot of times we wonder why we keep finding this empty void in our life. Or why? Because you look, there's no way for your heart to be perfect with him or to have shalom with him. Because you got too many other operators going on. We talked about why his system is going on. There are other systems running. Huh? He's got a directory, and we ain't going to look at his directory. We're going to look at what everybody else is doing. So we got our hearts so fixed and set on what other people are doing. You don't realize these people are in a lot of detriment. You just don't know it. Because you're living in the sun shining, don't mean these people are not going to hell. It will seem that there's no restitution, but restitution is coming. You're paying for stuff you did. Then why would he be exempt on these people? Why would there not be a restitution of payment to these people? Listen, I was looking up today in Europe. There is a massive rate of whites dying. These people dying. They're not telling you about that. Because white people don't ever want you to know what's going on in their community. But you've managed to show him and tell him and demonstrate everything going on in your community. He's watched you and he's marketed you. He's marketed your dance. You want to sell it cheaper. There go your nigga dance. Your tribal moves. Split and cockwheel for him. Everything you can do, he's used you. He's used you. Jennifer Lopez done came here and did number straight nigga dance, and she a Hispanic. Yeah. I'm doing Mexican. Got a nigga booty, done danced up behind off, and she got out of credit. Now she like she taught us how to dance. Yeah. I'm doing Mexican. They done come here and done kung fu the way in, and kung fu karate actually came from Africa. People don't even know it. It originated in Africa. All the knowledge, all the information we've ever had, we've shared it with these other nations, and now these nations have come back to sell it to us. All the invention we've ever invented, they've taken away from us and took away the memory and the mindset from how to go back and create it again, and now we got to come back there and let them teach it up. Now you go to, go to Africa right now and go on one of them explore, one of them exploration. You're going to have two niggas driving, black and oily, pretty black skin, but we know we look at it nasty, filthy now. You're going to have some white guy on the mic going to explain to you all the animals. Stop, hold on, hold on, look. Right now she's talking to her cat. Look, she's looking. She's talking to him. She's telling him. Oh, right now, Musama. That's the name. We Musama. Musama. They, that's what's on the birth certificate. We, we know her. So if you want to get out the Jeep and go play, say, act like I ain't here. Go do it. Go do it right quick. I'll throw some meat juice on your behind so you eat your behind up. Go ahead and play with it right in time. But this is, this is the problem we got. Now you're going back and you understand how they have the knowledge of the animal. They learn it from other tribal people that are there. They have learned behavior because you dwell right there with them. So you're going to know their behavior. You're going to know what's customary. They can watch and know when they can approach an animal or not. Those animals know when they see us over there, they know whether or not to attack or they know to keep going. We know times, we know seeds, and now the whites have come there and watched us instead. Now they're going to come back and make a video count. Now they're the experts. Now we spend all day watching somebody white. Oh, Mosumo is so sorry today. Oh, she hadn't ate in a week, and now she's wondering about her cat. She's wondering about her little kittens. Her kittens. A lion has kittens. Hey, you know, the white folk tell us anything. And just keep going, tell how the animal think, how the animal is so tired. Well, she said she'll just give up today and tomorrow. She told you this. And you sit here and listen to it, though they really got this information from the animal. And you know what that animal actually thinking? Why did they find me with that damn camera? 
I know they lying on me. All that right there, I wish they'd get that damn camera out of my face. They ain't trying to hunt the night. They use the cover of night when they hunt. At nighttime, their eyes open, their pupils open, that they can get the light from the moon. That's their advantage against their prey. Crocker out here with 85 red, doing big old um, double D batteries, all this stuff, shining on the prey. Oh, uh, Musama didn't catch anything tonight. She must restrap. She's thinking, cut that damn light off. That's all she's thinking. One can only imagine what's going through her mind. No, I can't know what she's thinking. Where that damn light come from? Man, if it was up to me, I would get all these animal big flashlights and camera and let them go take white people in their bedroom. Shine right in their damn bedroom, everywhere they go. <laughs> Just irritate everything you think about it. Oh, wait, and everything you know has been their story. Nigga sat here and tell a polar bear can swim 60 miles before he get tired. Which means the polar bear got in the water, started, and they were counting to go. 40, 50, 52, 56, 59, 60. Bear said, oh, I'm tired. 60 miles. You know, he just didn't stop. He couldn't stop. Why is you damn following me? I had to see me thinking, I thought you'd have turned around back there about 50, 22. He probably said, I want you to know where he's going. Well, I know you cracker. You're going to bring some more of your friends over here. Just stop that hub in the wall. I'm tired. I'm just tired. He took a wide slap on man. Everything you know of what they tell and this has become the dangerous point of everything we got. Then you go to alert to be in with these people, and then you wonder why we're in the state we're in. That's why we're looking at Shaloma. Because we're looking at this man went and did something that we were clearly know not to do, and now it's come back to haunt us. Come on at the book of uh U Allah Shamu, 34 and 8. Y'all are the chain in. Y'all going to make me go find and start a Baptist church. It ain't hard. I like to go in there and sleep with some deacon wife and everybody start following. Drink a little leak and tell some lies and then swing by sweet Jesus. It don't take much to start a Christian church. Tell niggas a whole bunch of lies and take their money. Whole bunch of broken promise. They ought to be tired of it. They ought to be tired of sitting to play with a man living a standard less than they live. How are you following somebody living less than you living? Somebody going to tell you about something ain't even keeping him, but it's going to help you. You ought to just know when you're being insulted. Huh? Going to tell you about the promise of what he's going to do, and the only person getting it is him. You get nothing. You beg, you scrounge, you steal, you rob, but he don't have to do it. By much of being a Muslim, you finna go out here and you finna sell pies and paper. That head nigga ain't finna sell no papers. Go see if you can get that nigga a banana. He won't even eat a banana, let alone sell one. As, as Farrakhan, the last time he ate a bean pie. Nigga eat shrimp, lobster, everything he's supposed to eat. Dining white, dining with crackers, drinking the finey wines and cheeses. <laughs> nigga ain't fool. Man, had them slick like that for nothing. Man, them crocker fade just study eat. Yeah. Caviar. <laughs> nigga eat shark steaks. All kind of stuff you supposed to eat. They don't fool, man. They make a fool like these folk, man. All oh, they be trusting these guys. All them rules and regulations ain't for them. It's for the peon that's following their foolishness. Y'all don't know what them guys do. Them guys, them run, they running through them women. Why you think they said they follow Elijah Muhammad? Because they ain't got no standard. What kind of moral compass and ethic you going to set five people you said cheating on your wife? I don't do it but a sorry nigga. I'll be respecting your home. If we had more of our men standing up, being, a, being an icon at home, we wouldn't have these problems we got. Just like we know the lion over in Africa is the icon of Africa. Because his crown is made the dignity, he got he'll set that he'll protect his family. He'll hold down his throne, he'll keep his kingdom. 
He don't let no one come and run him out. A real one will fight to the death. He won't live no other way. He couldn't see sitting there living and unlefty family and his kids sat there be destroyed and being killed. But you always like we do in the Negro community. We always got that nigga going to run off. He's afraid of being challenged. He's afraid something can happen to him. But you do understand when you turn your back and you leave his home, they're going to destroy your kids. Huh? Another tribe, another pride coming in, male lions, or the equivalent is the police coming in your home, taking you out. You do know your kids are prey. I ain't going to come and get you and don't kill your kids. Huh? I got to wipe your name from under Shamayim. I got to declare and make sure there's no future for you and your offspring. Don't y'all know why it's important for us to have to stand up? They're going to try to show you every black man that shoot back at these police. I'm not telling people to go out and do no random shooting, but I'm talking about for the defense and the care of our people. We're getting killed with no shooting. Some people don't mind going on them good Martin Luther King fight. White man just beating you up. Just keep your back. Turn. They'll keep hitting you. They blind. They're going to keep beating you. I'm swinging back like Stoker Carmichael. Huh? You know what they're telling? All of them ain't going to take that. When he do his sense and he do his number, I want him to just know, all of us ain't going to take that. Hmm? I'm like Ray Gilson. I would this spoon with Sean right now. I'd start stabbing me a nigga. Huh? I wish one of y'all would try to take my cornbread. Part two of my killing spree going to start right now. Ain't right. <laughs> that right? I like you finna get in your cornbread. I don't know. I like you finna hand somebody your cup. Man, don't do that. After why he be want something else? That's how we gotta be though. I'm gonna do that for example. We gotta stop giving these people our stuff. Y'all do this. Get up and leave right now if I'm lying. If we ain't in one of the worst situations we ever been in. Get up and leave right now if I'm sitting here lying that nobody is truly standing up for our defense. It scares me the fact that we are so comfortable. We're being gunned down and getting killed, and we're finna go buy this crack of Christmas toys. Another hope of a white lie. He nigga kill her with turkeys. Got you sitting out in the buzzer in November. A celebration when he dethroned you when he came here. And here you are like old happy nigga sitting here eating it with it. He ain't gonna come here and gonna bewitch you and belittle you with Christmas. Season greet, ringing bells in your face, speak to you. Hold on, Cracker. You ain't spoke to me all year. The fact you open your mouth, I would just shut up. <laughs> Nigga, go out the way and like, Mary Crippen, man. Shut up. <laughs> so, man, why is my people getting gunned down, getting killed? And we got time to be laughing and giggling with this man? Not at all. We're in the worst condition we could be in. Am I saying every one of them? No, but the one that's good, why you not fighting with us? Why you don't see us a real cause? White people ain't going to sit here and keep existing. They're going to let their kids get shot and get gunned down. They ain't going to let no police force go. The whole police force is going to be dismantled. They ain't going to wait on no feds to do no investigation. Whites going to do their own investigation. They got a black man that shot a white guy. Two black men shot a suspect, a criminal who tried to flee the scene, who tried to run them over, and they shot him. He didn't die. They killed a the kid in the car with him, and they immediately were arrested, charged, and they looking at losing their done job and going to prison. Anybody know police can shoot you, you in your car, you coming at them. Your car's a weapon. That's a weapon. That's a bomb. That's worse than a bullet. A bullet can hit something and possibly go in and out. A car, that's going to knock down my feet and run me over and kill me. Shot him. His son died, and the white police come out and they can say, I'm a father. I can only imagine what he felt his son died. Wonder what Trayvon and Martin's father were feeling. Uh, what's the guy, Eric Garner? In a, in a uh, Freddie Gray. What could their father, I can only imagine, I'm a black man, I can only imagine what their father could be feeling. But you're going to tell me about a criminal white man who was fleeing the scene? The police life in danger, he was charging, coming at them. I would have shot him. I ain't even the police. How do we get to this point? That we have no rights. We have no right to life. We'll never vindicate the hands of these people. Why are we allowing these people to still judge us? 
Our people should be establishing their own government. Our people should be establishing their own hospital, own medical care. Our people need to establish their own businesses. Our people need to have our own banks. We can trade with them, but we cannot mix our monies in with these people. We cannot afford to do that anymore. We cannot go under the flying flag of America. It hurts. It hurts. Y'all hear me? The detriment of what's happening is only going to get worse with our kids. Our kids are still in the concentration camp being taught how to be good Americans. Even if they gun down, their teacher's not going to talk about it. The black teacher's not going to talk about it. Nobody's going to talk to them about that. They're going to come in and get them the same curriculum they've been given, which is a, a curriculum that's going to reduce their, their thinking and their ability. Hmm? We got to teach our kids while they're in school how to be educated but understand the system and not being taken down by the system. The system is set to take our kids down. Hmm? The, the system is set up to pick and program so they know the teachers before they put them in there. The easiest thing to put in a, a black school is a black woman ain't got no man. You just got a lot of black men set up futuristic, already set up for jail. Look at your teacher. Most of them too young, too inexperienced, don't have kids, don't know how to deal with a child. Most of our average black women that sit in school system don't even have a man. They're in school trying to get a man, trying to wear some sort of man to look at them. Oh, these guys don't even realize. They don't know. Am I lying, teacher? Nothing's changed with these people. They don't, they don't have the experience. It's not just the education you need. You need experience with children. You need to understand the concept of children, the mindset of children. I don't care what people give you to do. You still got a mind. They're like a police. I don't care what these people tell me, though. So you got to shoot the kid. You do not have a brain, which means I can reason though whether my life is in danger. Just because somebody tell me, shoot, that don't mean I got to die. I use my head because I would hope somebody would use their head when they come down to me. It's bad you got a person that can't think. They just follow every rule. Don't you know when they come down our law, he said a, a man got to be able to think. Huh? Even he told you to judge in yourselves because you have to be able to think. Shaul said, I trust that I manifest to your conscience, which means you need to be able to think. And it's dangerous when you're in a religion or teaching or you're a part of a society or association that does not allow you to think. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. I mean, son, let me think. All this is choice. All choice. I ain't made to do nothing. Y'all home, I chose life. What Yahuwah did for me was gave me options. Look at your present day situation is what I had to look at. Look at my thought process and look at how I felt. Look at what it was I was trying to achieve and what I wanted to do. Well, in order to do what I felt, which is I really wanted to be saved, although I did the opposite, the option were get rid of what you were doing and do what I say do. All choices. Choices with conviction. The whole purpose of me talking to you guys is to get you to look at, you have choices today. That's why I say you had an option later. I don't disrespect, I don't. Ain't mad nobody that leave. You got a choice. You got to look at what's best for you. But you got to look at this. You can't fight these people by yourself. The average people you deal with don't even think the way you think. I ain't got time. Get anyway, let's talk about something else. Let's look at a movie. Let me put my radio on. See, this is all how he subconsciously fools you from looking at reality. A three-minute music, an hour, 59-minute movie is going to take you away from the mere fact of you can be killed by these people at any time. Do you know they did in the slave time when they had slaves? You never knock. You just walk in the house. Why would I, as a master, my house, my property, my slave, why would I knock? I hope you're doing something when I come in the room. I hope you're doing something with your wife when I walk in. Y'all my property. That's why they kick your dough in because you never stop being a slave. Can you imagine that? You're in your house waiting, and you got to make sure whatever you're doing, do it quick. Whatever you're doing, make sure you keep on, because master can come in any time. He can open the door and come in. He's not going to knock. Tell me what's the difference today when he can come in whenever he get rid of your house. They got no knock search warrant. There's never been executed. They can't show you one ever been executed in a white neighborhood. No knock. That means door off hinges, I'm in your house. Who putting that door back on? Here you have a minimum wage, you barely make it. You can afford to get your door put back on. Put a curtain up there and hope nobody don't come in. Do like they in the old time, take a chair and turn it, fold against the door. That let people know you went at home. 
Well, people going to pretty much figure you ain't at home with your done dog on. And they coming in too. See, everybody waiting and praying on you. Everybody praying. That don't bother y'all? That your life ain't nothing in this place and you pay, the, you pay more taxes than the other nation. You put in more work and more time than other. You serve. All these other people, you ask them, how many other nations have served in the military more than we have? Who has a longer history of serving? Who has a lot from revolutionary to civil war? Huh, to World War I and II. Five through 12. Still in wars, we still stuck there. But you don't get the human decency that if something happens to you by the hands of these white people, that these people be charged and convicted? What's the fear for them? What, what's, what's, the, what's the ramification if something happened to you in the hands of them? To them. Why would they stop? I mean, you got to stop them. I got to make you stop. Y'all hear me? It has called for the time of our people arming ourselves, us standing up saying, we will not be gunned down again. We will not take another black woman being hung in a cell, not in Utah. We won't take your investigation. We need to investigate. We need people. It, it, we just can't. It, it, it's to the point. We, we can't do that. Because once this man take us and put up behind that door, life is over. Everything at this point is what he said. We can't afford this man taking nobody away from us. You know, it's bad, and this has always happened. Even in the struggle when our people marched and protested, there were people taken on the street that never came back. People, I just remember I seen a guy, they grabbed him. I didn't know his name. See, that's that. I need to know your name because I need to know who to ask for. I need to know where he's at if I don't see him. I need to be able to report. The last time I seen him, they had him. Now, I'm going to blame these people. And I'm going to ask for restitution that he be given back. If you can't bring him back, then we're going to take one of yours. Matter of fact, we take two of here for every one of ours. And then you send him a note saying, I'm still short. I'm still short. Because every one of mine got interest on it. Compounded daily. That's how we got to look at ourselves. But we got to stop killing each other. We got to stop killing each other because we don't change our mindset. This is why he's able to keep destroying us because he can keep throwing it back in our face. Whenever we dispute him on something, it's always, but the crime in Chicago. But see, he can only use one city. The one city he used, he needs to go back to look at. This is crime that you have invoked. This is crime that you have incited. These are guns in Chicago that you have put on their street. You can't find one nigga arrest that they found a truckload of guns and a nigga driving it through there with it. These guns have gotten to the street through their crooked police that are white. High brass people put them on the street because you need crime. Or think if crime stay down, you do know we're gonna start cutting jobs. Not need people stupid now. When crime drop, that's just common sense. We don't need to have all these police officers. The numbers are down, FBI reports coming out, the crime, people doing better. We don't need them. You start getting rid of organizations or getting rid of jobs. White people smart not realize you keep invoking crime, you keep the drugs coming in, that way you keep the crime up so we keep our jobs. And once we go and show the FBI reports and we show the number that they fit, when the FBI came in, anybody in the project, from the project? I used to be in the project, I live, I live in one project, I moved on my home. How many of y'all remember the FBI coming and knocking on y'all door doing census, trying to find out what you on crack or drug? How many gun shooting you was in? So where do you get these numbers from? Where do you get it from? If you hadn't talked to everybody in the project to do the numbers, where did you get it from? As soon as you see it, it's just got to be the truth. They already saying Chicago got 3,000 murders. Again, this is what they tell them. You know why Chicago don't came to be the light? Chicago had never changed. Said they got a black man from Chicago. Now Chicago been the light. Ever since he been out, you never heard about Chicago crime before he got in office. As soon as you get a black man in office, you're going to try to use that to keep our eyes off of what's going on. And instead of you looking at why the crime is so bad in Chicago, because he's not the mayor of Chicago, he's not the police chief of Chicago. He's not the governor of Chicago. 
These people incite these crimes, invoke these crimes. They supply the guns to these groups and keep these people out here. How hard is it? Let me think. How hard is it to stop a gang? With, can I can't bother you for a second. I'm looking for a gang. Just, just walk up and down the pavement a little bit. I'm trying to find this gang. That's far them. You just turn back. They wear all black. If I could find them, come on, baby. I'm just looking. If it's some kind of way, but I know they all wear all black. But they out here and they killing people and selling drugs and they real violent and they wear all black. Some kind of way we can stop the gangs from the violence and the drugs. But I can't find them or know where they at because they wear all black. That's good, good man. This is how stupid they are. All these gangs have on notable colors and tats. How hard is it to stop these people? There are no gangs that don't wear colors. They ain't putting tats on. They ain't got bandanas on. They're not hard to catch. It's all about do you want to catch them? Because if you stop them, you just end somebody's job. As much as it made to stop Al Qaeda. They just blamed Al Qaeda today. They just got blamed for Obama. We ain't let time we heard about them. All of a sudden, they back in Yemen now. They just blowed up and killed some soldiers. He called people get tired of him. You ain't heard about the Taliban. You got to ease them back into a shooting out of a while. I used to get old. You got to keep going because people are tired of him. They say, well, let's go back and get an old game. Get that start so people see these wars we fight, y'all, these wars are real. And we need more troops sent out here. And we need more money to stop them. Let me tell you, what, why y'all sitting here playing? Would you want to wake up one morning and one of them nuclear bombs sitting right here in the heart of one of these American cities? Hmm? In Congress, Georgia, do y'all know we picked up some chatter on the radio that Al-Qaeda and ISIL and Taliban is looking at Covington and Congress, Georgia. Do y'all know how these white folks can be scrambling, running across here trying to get everything out of Kroger's in English? Just stupid. Acting like them folks looking at these poor trash crackers down here. What did they know about some Congress? Covington. I'm going to talk about that land is Hollywood and them sissies. These folks ain't looking at me. Them folks would have been blowed up over here. These folks are lying to you. These folks done been over there. Them folks blow up like this. Do they not? Boom, boom, boom. Rolls out. Boom, boom. Why ain't nobody went boom, boom, boom over here yet? Man, that little fake nigga stuff don't crit the, the crock pot. Them some black helpers don't know how to cook. I stuck them oxtail in there and put them on high for 20 hours. No gun done. Where are they going to blow up? I got people been in Afghanistan, been all right. We ain't never had a pressure cooker blow up over there. All of a sudden, that nigga buying pressure cooker going to see us. They said, I can't get your name for this one, uh, Allah Akbar. Okay, Mr. Akbar. They nigga keeping receipts and filling out warranties. Are y'all conscious? A terrorist just filled out a warrant, gave a real name and address on the warranty card. I'm finna blow this damn thing up and I want to get a warranty on it. What do you collect? Man, y'all stop it. Just stop it. Who does this? Who gets a warrant on something they finna blow up? I ain't never seen folks so stupid in my life. Every time they show you one of these great terrorists, all of a sudden they got a whole life. Even there's a little baby, they had something to blow up. All teenage years, they got videos all on them blowing up. Then they blow up. You're saying, so if y'all pick, why y'all ain't been stopped? Because they create this stuff and they're going. That's the purpose of Hollywood. You can create. All they need to do is get a couple of films. You can make your own stuff. It's really not hard. Once they get a couple of films, you can make it do what they want. Let me, they got, listen, they got tech now. They can take a video of me. They can voice over. My video was somebody voice over. They have the tech now to take and make it say whatever they want to say. Take it in court, show me saying it. And it's, it's right there. We've seen it. It makes no sense. Nothing they doing makes absolutely no sense. When them people do all that, they make all these, give all these tapes and information, crop pots and warranty. And you came all the way here, all of a sudden you got here, you want to do the thing the American way. I ain't never seen stuff so stupid in my life. 
You got to start watching people that bring you news. You got to start watching everybody. Watch me. Don't make me upset. Watch everybody. When your soul and your family at stake, everybody got to be watching. Somebody of I don't like people watching me. Now I got to watch harder. Huh? Everybody lied to you. How many times they infiltrated up with implanting people to do damage to us to take us down? Anybody ever came on the scene and tried to liberate us and educate us, always get infiltrated by somebody that look like us. Oh, somebody that's sitting there ain't got a conversation. You sit here with the man, like Dr. King. Only thing should have been reported was he, he knocking these hoes down. And man, he can cuss. He smoked like a chimney. But a terrorist? Anti-American? Dr. King fought and wanted a nigga to stay him. Dr. King wanted you to be treated like white people. Instead of saying, really, you should have been treated better. What was anti Dr. King for these people to go and try to find? What was you reporting? What was he doing that none of your gay, that any of your gay president and your homosexual and your whoring presidents weren't doing? Ronald Reagan, George Bush been banging. Lyndon Johnson been banging, and he done pissed on people in public. And they still talking about R. Kelly. What had they, tell me what was in the report on Dr. King. Give, me the, give us the heart and the news so we can go ahead and get it done. Come on so we can digest it. They'll sit here and discredit our people when they will sit here and, and give credit to their people that constantly have done us wrong. Yes, Why is that never even want you in the White House? Theodore Roosevelt told you it'll never be one of y'all niggas in the White House. And you still love them. They're in bad shape, man. They put these pictures up, show you the Russia, the, the monument these folks got, all of them. Racist crackers that rape black women. Had black kids and never did nothing for them. Thomas Jefferson, deadbeat dad. Benjamin Franklin, deadbeat dad. They all had black kids. George Washington, deadbeat dad. They sold their kids off. You can look at something that you made create that came from your loins and you can still kill it. It's because you have no soul. You wonder why they can't dance? You got to have soul. Man, damn, man, you got to have soul, man. You got to have soul when you're doing that. You got to have soul. You ain't got no soul. You can't feel it. He ain't got no soul. He can kill his own. Huh? We can love out if it's handicapped, if it's blind, if it's mentally incompetent. We say, that's my baby. That's my kid. That's my child. Not him. He can watch it, know he fathered it, look at it, look like him, and still kill it. You know what? Go right to church and praise his God. Huh? It's all a sacrifice to him. And you don't look at him. He can kill something that comes from his loin. What you think going to do with you and you don't come from him? What are you going to do to ensure your future? What are you willing to do to ensure your future? Plan one, we have to come together. Our coming together have to be unifying under one purpose, we got to declare one ruler. That's Allahim. I tell anybody want to get together, we got to sit down and look at first what's true. What is a mot? What's true? Once we all agree on what's true, then we look at purpose. We got to look at intent. Y'all got me? Then it's got to be a revolution. Every great thing ever happened came from a revolution. Any great breakaway was a revolution. They even still account the Revolutionary War today. Hmm? The Civil War was a revolution. Huh? They come and say they joined 50 states to come under one government. Didn't happen without a revolution. You didn't come out of Mizraim without a revolution. It united us under one Allahim. We said in Mizraim in Egypt, we had many gods. Sun God. See, they had a so-called virgin that had a baby sun God. Huh? We had to unite under one, Allahim. Took a revolution to do that. Y'all hear me? The revolution will be televised. It'll be televised. The whole world is watching us. 
The whole world is watching. You know what everybody's afraid of? The United Nations meeting. They're going to tell you about all these means that people have with global warming and everything that's going on. These people are afraid. See, you don't realize how much you connect to people. If you actually stood up and you marched the correct way, other people look like you're going to stand up too. Other people like you're going to march. Other people like you're going to protest. This won't be a protest where we'll stand out a day or two and we'll go home. This will be one when we go out, we won't come back. We will not come back until things have changed. You can't go back and keep talking. You talk to this man one time. You give him your demands. You don't ask him. You allow him to know these are our demands. We'll do that simply because this will be protocol from our book. When Yahuwah looked down, he said, I've seen they're burdened by the hands of their test matter. I've heard their cry. Now you go and you tell Pharaoh, I said, Yashra'al is my firstborn. Let him go. You won't get no more warnings after this. After this, it'll be signs and wonders. Because he's going to have to deliver us with a mighty yard, which is his right hand. I'm trying to tell the truth. These people tell they want to. They won't stop the revolution. You cannot stop it. He will not be stopped. Yahuwah will not be tamed. He will not allow his people to continue to be a slave and be tamed by these people. Let my people go. Huh? That we can serve him. But if he does not let us go, then surely he's going to deliver us with a mighty hand. Y'all hear me? That's the only way it's going to happen. But this go talk, lead, go back work, slave, wait, Watch the news, shot down, shot down, gun down, gun down, lied on, false imprisonment, hung. Go back, talk again. Go back, work, slay, shot down, shot down, shot down, hung in jail again. This can't keep happening. This can't keep happening. And tell them, don't go looking for no Negro leader to see who stop us. See, this got to be a collective move. We don't need nobody to lead it. Them but you who are word. Y'all hear me? We all got to have the same act. Are you tired of being disenfranchised? Are you tired of being humiliated and disgusted and disgraced? Then it can't be out here on the drive of one man. This got to be a drive that every heart feel the same way. This got to stop. You have the right to ride and go and travel without your life being taken a sniff from you by somebody saying they are paid by you to protect you. There ain't no white man to tell me that. Finish me up right here and I'm going to let him go. Ooh, all I should move 34. Now, y'all all right? I probably need to retire. I might need to retire and just go and join some peaceful protest. Or you can sing Sweet Low Sweet Chariot. Come for to carry me home. Tired of chariots carrying us somewhere. And we're bad the same way every time they bury us. We'll have an old Negro leader. First thing they ask for, can you put me on a horse and bring a chariot? Chariot. And my home probably be a grave. So you got to start looking at what these people been training you to do. They showed Martin Luther King or took his wife. They're on horse and buggy. That's not, no, don't put me on no horse and buggy. Don't do that. That's not my home. Y'all hear me? Just a stopping place to you. Who will come back to resurrect my body? And then there'll be another war. Y'all hear me? War ain't going to ever stop. When you who will come back, ain't he going to make war? Y'all hear me? He's going to make war with the inhabitants of disarray. Y'all all right? Y'all all, three and one. I try to finish up. Y'all who all, he gonna call him. I just, I don't believe this. I just tired. Just tired. <sighs> they gonna call it Joel. That's crazy. This is Yahuwah is mighty. If we just got over the fear of these people and got the fear of Yahuwah in our heart, who else would mess up? Who else would give a person that do them wrong the opportunity to say, do right? Who else? Who else? Let me tell you what. China still blames Japan now for their domination when they came in years ago. China freed themselves from Japan and from Britain. Britain, and they call it Great Britain in Japan, ruled over China. China broke themselves away and had the number two economy and on their way to being the number one economy in the world. China will not bow or submit or listen to anyone. 
Hmm? They beg international intervention to stop China. China dump sand in the sea and call it China Island. Fantasy Island for Chinese people. Come here and be what you want to be. China will not be stopped. China will never forgive Japan for what they did to them. Never. They've been free for, for many years. You still being degraded in disgrace, disrespected, murdered, and shot down? And you so passive. How are you the devil when you don't like it? How is a woman being raped that went wrong? Well, see, we should have watched that in the courts. When a woman come there and she reports she'd been raped and they put on the stand. And they ask her, what were you wearing? Some stock. Were they fishing it? The stocking. I mean, yeah. What about your blouse? Was a button open? With cleavage? I mean, yeah. I mean, jury, as you can see, she asked for it. Why else did she have on those stockings and have her shirt unbuttoned, low cut, right here, and you see the cut spread on her chest if she didn't, if she wasn't asking for it? Hmm? Why else? This becomes questionable. Her attacker could possibly get off now. Because the jury got away there and say, yeah, why did she wear that? A couple of them bastards got the same shirt. They just buttoned it up. Some of them just ripped their stockings off. I ain't think about it like that. See, the reason why they can do that and allow criminals to get off because they criminal. The system is criminal itself. So they're just thinking, putting themselves in that same shoe or looking at, really, you provoke me. See, the, the reason why they don't feel bad about what they're doing to you, because the truth be told, you asked for it. You asked for it. Every one of y'all been killed and murdered and beaten and hung in jail. You asked for it. You just didn't know it. You war what said, come and get me. They don't know that. See, they've been playing you the whole time. You've been looking, wondering, how do you people get out of here? Because they've been looking. If you didn't like it, why you ain't fight back? Why you didn't fight back? Yeah, you wanted it. You know no means yes. Where you learn that from? You learned that from him. No means yes. See, the whole time he been doing, you think about it. He watch you come tomorrow and you're gonna go to church. And he's gonna look. And you everybody going to church is happy with what they in and what they got. Jesus saves. He was a slave ship. So when you say Jesus slave, and Jesus was the name of a slave ship. Jesus brought you from one end of Africa and brought you to this end of Africa, and they told you it was America. So they told you that when they came and got you from Africa, you were playing with your green monkey. Can I use your balloon in your mind? You was playing with your green monkey. And what would happen? Your green monkey would scratch you sometimes, and you get AIDS. Now, I came with good Jesus. Ain't he good? Ain't he good? Hmm? Save you. Hmm? Heal my body. Hmm? Save my soul. Hmm? I'm put my feet on a solid ground. See, I came with good Jesus and picked her up and delivered her from her green monkey who would scratch her and give her AIDS. Craig was over in Africa and he was eating himself. He was eating other people. He had more kids. He ate a, I got him just before he ate Leon and brought him over him. So you see how, ain't he good though, y'all? So now when y'all look at, I know this is all, I'm just using them for example. So now when you go here, this man look, and you sat on your car, you said, Jesus saved. So you're admitting, I really did you a favor when I came and got you. I really helped you out, didn't I? Good old white man. Huh? Then I see y'all going to church. I gave you church, which is by definition a place of pagan worship. Niggas don't even read. Church is a place of pagan worship. It's how you, what you do? I went to church. White man, glad to hear. I was served that it was good. Bless you for asking. He just sat back and smiled. And you said he wanted the good one. He wanted just want to see what you know. You went to church today? Huh? Told you Jesus' birthday coming up. Hmm? He has he been playing you the whole time he's been sitting here. And, he keep, and you keep showing him that nothing's wrong with what's going on with you. You got a monkey suit on? You act like a monkey, you act just like a coof. 
He did the same thing that he saw Shaluma did. Every couple of years, he'd get a ship. He started bringing monkeys and gorillas in. That's how he brought you him. He learned that from your book. He saw Shaluma were exporting gorillas and monkeys over to Africa. How about I make good Jesus and I export monkeys and gorillas back over to the other side of Africa? Everybody that beat you have learned from your book. They watched you. They read your books, and our books were translated to him by our teachers. Our Kohan, he's going to call priests. Priests are people that pedophile to sleep with kids. A Kohan is what we have. Our Kohans have taught him our book, and he learned how to sit here manipulate you and strip you down from gold. Strip you down. Look at you. What you going to do to the man he said? He said, this ain't nothing. That means you got more? Had we continued reading in that 10th chapter, you would have found that all the nations desire Shaluma. You know why? They want to come and see it. Can you imagine every nation want to come and see what you got? That was your hurt. Because when they saw it and they desired it, they came and got it. Same thing they did with Yahushua. Everybody was there when they crucified him. That's why they took his clothes from him. Because everybody want a piece of it. See, these people have been watching you for a long time. They've been learning how to strip you, manipulate you, rape you for a long time. This book you just learning and getting translated to you, he been learning. The people I wouldn't have no problem explaining it to is your white master. He knows what I'm telling you. He knows that is a threat to him. Huh? That's a threat to sanctity to him because he needs you sitting around convinced on keeping the Sabbath day, which is Greek, which is going to put you back up to the sabbatic goat. Ain't that amazing? They act like they don't know what the Sabbath is. But you know what's amazing what sabbatic comes from is Sabbath? It's actually dealing with educators. It actually deal with ed educated professors. That's the time off they get from work, from two months to a year. Which means your professors at your universities of your universities know what sabbatic is. But Balfamet is the sabbatic goat. None of your professors ain't going to have no problem knowing what sabbatic is. Just you. They're well familiar, well instructed, just not for you to know. I want to tell you, everything you know has been on a need-to-know basis. You who have put in my heart and say, they need to know. I come and do it just like what he did, open the eyes of the blind. Samir had blinded you. That's God's poison. Samir's God's poison. And you've been playing with Lilith. You've been playing with the night monster, a demon. Hmm? These folks have been playing with you the whole time. You have been played with and manipulated the whole time. These people have been making a complete fool of us. I just want to awaken your senses. Come on for the third chapter so I can let them go. I done talked long enough today. I ain't going to have no friends. I'm going to go look for me a friend. Anybody know where I can find a friend? I want a white friend. I want somebody to do something for me. Just you got anybody you know that you can recommend for a friend? He's a hip mute, thank you. I don't friend. Zach, you don't know nobody doing it. All Zach friends black. I don't want none of Zach friends. Zach friend don't want no draw. No, they're gonna be strange. Oh yeah, and then his friends get beat up by homosexuals. I forgot about that. They get scrapped. Man, that homosexual beat their friend up. Then they watch their friend get beat up. Man, that sissy scrapped him. Man, I'd have made that joke a wreck his car. Man, you know what I'm saying? Let a sissy beat me up. This can't never get out and we finna kill this sissy. You can't do that to your friend. When I left my friend, it was a bu I couldn't see. Samir had hit me in the eye. Isn't that right? I read it was a crowd of niggas. That stuff they use on crowd. They had tear gas. They said and dropped him. All to get whooped up by sis. <laughs> that that sissy scrapped him. Like, what kind of mess is this? Don't worry about it, Zach. You knew now. Listen. For behold, in those Yamim, and in that time, 
when I shall bring again the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem. Yeah. I will get I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Yahushaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Asherol. Yeah. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Y'all yeah, see what happened? That sound familiar. That's what they did to Yahushua. They took his garment and parted it. See, when they took his garment, they ripped it into four parts. They actually were sitting there showing how they were going to divide us up. You sit out in the four corners. They give you north, south, east, and west. And to each soldier, they gave a part. You didn't pay attention, did you? Those are military regiments they gave you to. How's it? You couldn't have took me without a military. Our people don't know nothing, do they? That's what you need to know about parting. Divide. That's why they took his garment and they departed it. They parted it up and they, each soldier got a part, which was trying to show you that they were going to use military to come in and get you and fetch you, and that's how they spread you out. Everywhere you at, a country got a military. Go see where you at and nobody ain't got no military. You were given to the military. Don't worry about it. They're still slaves. They don't never need you to be conscious of this. This is why he's telling me he's going to come back and get them. They done parted you out. Hmm? They took it off. We were his breastplate. We were his covering. And they took us and they tore us open and they split us and then they divided us out and gave us over to all these different military remnants. That's why you everywhere. You everywhere. They ain't nowhere they can go. You ain't there. In the fifth chapter of the book of your cars, y'all, you'll see they told him to let, take him a sharp sword and let it come upon his beard. And when he take it, he want to let it blow. Let the wind take it. That's how you were. These people came in like a whirlwind on us. Huh? They came in and swole up, whoop, and that they know we were scattered, dispersed everywhere. They knew exactly what they were doing. They have paperwork that can clearly, definitively let you know what tribes and what people they took where. They won't tell you, though. Got every nigga run around telling him he Mendingo Warrior. You don't know what you are, nigga. You are a dingling warrior. Man, I done fool out you. So you roots and you heard one name. Every nigga now Mendingo. More dingling than any done thing. Because our penis don't think. Gotta tell it to you the way it is because you don't done thing. Always go sticking your done something somewhere, stick yourself somewhere you don't done belong. Dingling fit you. Tell them you're a dingling warrior. Had a done brain, you wouldn't be doing this stupid stuff you do. You'd have been organized your done self and strategized. And try to set up a future, provide for yourself, and turn back to your Allahim. Listen. And they have cast lots for my people. See that? What they did for here, Chloe? Cast lots for it. I told them. It's going to come up every time. That's when they cast lots for his garment. On who's for the coat. They care to see who's it going to be. One person got the whole bulk of us. Y'all don't realize what these people did for us. These people did a lot of damage to us. And it ain't never stopped. And you know how you know? Go to Washington, D.C. Go look at them. Anybody been to Washington? Anybody look at all them? In? Look at how much Greek lettering you got on them buildings. It's everywhere. Letting you know they discipline never stopped. The Greeks, the Latin, all these people, the Roman, these are the people that captured you and made a fool out of you. Nigga sitting around trying to sing something. Oh, my mama to papa to me, he is so wonderful. Stupid nigga. Sing them slave nigga song. They told you, Yashua ain't no homeboy and slave. Look at Greg, shut up the key. Where I ended the car? <laughs> he ain't right. I don't want back that night. That was Greek. Y'all know good and done. All them folk that enslaved us. All these people that enslaved us made a fool out of us. Listen. And have given a boy for an harlot. Look what they undid. Gave a boy for a harlot. What else happened? And sold a girl for wine. Listen. That they might drink. Listen, nothing. That gave where I went for some liquor. Trade out a boy for a whore. Listen. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon? Yeah. And all the coasts of Palestine. Yeah. Will ye render me a recompense? And what happened? And if ye recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. See that? That's what he looked at. Eye for eye. He said, you're going to try to recompense me? It's going to be quick how fast I'm going to re recompense you back. Come on. Because you have taken my silver and my gold. What did y'all hear about Tyre and Sidon? It's going to be more tolerable for Solomon and Gomorrah than it's going to be for them. 
They already told about them. Hold you, God. Let's see what they're talking about. Yahoo, the 11th chapter. So you hear names, you need to know what you're listening to. A month. Instead of sitting in each church and being dumb to doing five. That's a word, too. Dumb, you, you don't know five. Somebody let you go. Dumb to five. You don't know none of them, let you go. I'm going to call Webster. That bastard can't argue with me. He done made up words, too. What I'm worried about Webster for anyway. That nigga shorter than Gary Coleman. Y'all do know that's a good one, though, ain't it? You like that, too, don't you? That thing that's sweeter. I just come up with these things. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how they come up like that. It might be some kind of joke genius or something. Listen. Y'all hold on. Stop. Y'all didn't get that? Webster? A how many of y'all remember Webster? A month. Then they, they say, he shot in Jerry, Gary Coleman. You, you like that, too? Come on. Give me some. Give me some. 999,000. 826 more. I had like a million of these. I'm at 999,826 more. Who else keep count like that? If I was white, I'd already be at two. Nigga wanna know, I keep accurate count too. It had been like, yeah, because I, I know I told a couple of hundred thousand one day, there's another hundred, yeah, I'm at like three or four left. Number accurate. Listen. For Yaukanan came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath a devil. Come on. The Ben of Anus came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a Anus gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, mm -hmm. but wisdom is justified of her children. Mm -hmm. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done. What happened? Because they repented not. What happened? Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, what happened? They would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. What happened? But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the yom of judgment than for you. Uh-huh. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto Shamaim, shall do what? Be brought down to hell. Come on. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this yom. But what happened? I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the yom of judgment than for thee. What happened? At that time, Yahusha answered and said, I thank thee, O Abba, Yahuwah of Shamayim and Aritz. For what happened? Because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even why? So, Abba. As it seemed what? For so it seemed Taub in thy sight. That what happened? All things are delivered unto me of my Abba. And what has happened? And no anus knoweth the Ben, but the Abba. And neither knoweth any anus the Abba. Say who? The Ben. And who else? He to whomsoever the Ben will reveal him. So that's why he had a problem with Tyre and Sidon. Because you done sat and you done saw, and now you done sat here and you've done nothing. So now he's going to render you a recompense. See, the same thing you got to sit back and look at, too. And this is what we need when we come down to our race. There needs to be accountability. Your who calls for accountability. You can't sit and know and do nothing. The same way I tell these white people, you can't keep sitting on the sideline and saying that you're not the people that's doing it and you're not doing nothing to stop it. Then you can't sit here and say you're not the people that's committing these sins, these transgressions, and you're not doing nothing to make changes against it. You've heard the dabari, which is the word. You sat here and the trumpet been sounded to rule, and you sat here and you ignored it. Now he said, are you going to recompense me? Because I'm going to put a recompense quick on your head. It's time for us to wake up in here, people. Come on, finish that book of Yahuwah. I mean, uh, Yahuwah, so I can get ready to let them go. Don't worry about it. That's the problem. Everybody think they can just know and sit back like people do with the home Bible study. Yeah, I know all that. I know I know for me. Yeah, yeah, I know about that seven. Where you go? Yeah, I just be at home. So you ain't doing nothing you know. So you don't know. If you knew, you'll act, you'll do. It's dangerous to say you know and don't do. Y'all hear me? That's what's dangerous with us. Yeah, I know these four wrong. I know. Well, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't do nothing. That's dangerous. It was better if you did know. Y'all hear me? Now he sat around, he gave homage, he gave thanks to Yahuwah for the fact you didn't know. That means if you don't know, you're blind, which means you're blind, you're going to be on the outside. 
You can't keep playing with the done accuser of our, our key. You can't keep playing with God's venom. It's time for us to wake up and get conscious. Then you say I'm playing with this done tramp Lilith who's making a fool out of you. You're playing with the night hole. You're in the done street, rummaging around, looking like a done crackhead or a prostitute. Straighten your behind up. Our people in bad done shape. Nobody gonna come to correct our nation. Tell our men to get in here and be men. Dignified men. Working men providing for their home. I've been telling y'all that. If any don't provide for his own specimen, his own house, he is worse than an infidel had denied the faith. Man, supposed to take care of his own. Somehow made no done sorry excuse for nobody. Get your behind up and do something. Man, sorry joke. Sit around here ain't going to do nothing because you ain't got no kid. You should never get none. Got in your heart to give him bed to provide. Be a man. You got to wait to be no man and you get nobody. You need to be a man before they come. No woman got time to raise no sorry baby. No sorry nigga. You take on a man, she's taking on a leader of the pride. Ain't that right? She's taking on a malak. Got a king. Somebody to rule. Somebody going to look and take care of that home. Somebody going to defend that pride. Nigga somewhere playing around. Oh, nigga job. Nigga pay. Nigga penny. I respect the done arm robber better. Get behind up and make something happen. Y'all hear me? I told you I like John Q. John, do something. Man, I looked at man. He won't do right. And sure enough, talk to people all he can talk to him. He took a chain, took a bag, and put his gun in there. Trying to come for you to die. He's he trying to talk to me. He's trying to talk. He said, keep like he walking. Hold on. He's like, man, now they're talking, man. Come no, listen to him. No talking. He done tried to done done enough talking. He don't look down, gave up his truck, sold his TV. You know the nigga get rid of the TV is already serious. Yeah. You know, still up, he gonna look at man. He told him, I'm not burying my son. My son gonna bury me. Hmm? Yeah, he went to jail. But the conclusion was his son got a heart. You know what he could have did? He could have been a good American. Let the system work. Let his son die. Don't go to jail. Still done lost everything he got and his son. His heritage. But you know, he looked down. I can't let my son down. My wife counted on me to do something. I can't let my family down. I done talked to these people. I done went back to these insurance companies. I done tried to work. I gave these people my word. If you let me, I promise you I'll pay you. We can't go with that. We got to get the money. He read and looked online and said, these hospitals give away millions and millions of dollars a year. Why can't I be a recipient of that? My boy finna die. He learned that the insurance company, y'all get the HMO insurance, which I taught you. HMO insurance is nigga insurance. Because all of your providers and everything is picked by the insurance company. All of your care is determined by the insurance company. Which means when you have an HMO, so I tell y'all stuff, why these nigga preachers ain't told y'all this stuff? An HMO simply let them know, before the insurance company, the insurance company just examined real hump. I ain't going to tell you that, though. This means you're talking. I wouldn't tell you that because you have an HMO. I got to tell the insurance company. Yeah. Yeah, this Dr. Sue sale. Yeah, I just <laughs> checked it. It looked cancerous. Yeah. I mean, no, he won't die today, possibly. Yeah, it could be down the road. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right, we'll see you back next year. HMO. Before I tell him and we deal with the care, I got to talk to this insurance company. The insurance company just want to know if we're going to spend money, is he going to die right now? And I had to tell them no. If he ain't going to die right now, why are we worry about going inside, spending money on operating to fix something? For all we know, he, you know, my, he is a nigga. You, stop your ears, I want you to hear now. You'll stop your ears, put it. He a nigga. And y'all know a nigga, he's going to probably want to drop an insurance probably next month at Christmas. Come on, New Year's, you don't have a party. Y'all know how nigga do drop, pick up. You can say, you know, oh, you down. You heard about it. HMI, I wasn't supposed to tell me, just the y'all insurance company. So why are we going to invest money on this nigga subject to drop this insurance and we don't spend out $100,000 or $250,000 on a surgery? Well, we can let the next insurance company do it. The one that he get when he pick it back up because the fines done came to get him, and now he's got to get it. He fell out on their bill, on their watch. I don't want to spend money on Leon 
and Leon wind up dropping insurance later, I don't pay that all this money. Y'all understand the system? PPO allows you to pick your own doctor, which means me being his doctor on the PPO, I'm going to let him know I'm a, what I'm going to do because I don't know. I'm not going to say it is, but I detected something I don't like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a note I'm going to send it to the insurance company and let them know we want further testing. We want to make sure this get this approved. We go ahead and ship him off somewhere and get him checked so we can find out before something gets worse. That's the difference between a PPO and an HMO. So when you look at it, don't look at it for dollars. It's kind of like when you look at generic and you look at name brand, I assure you they're not the same. Because your nigga, they'll tell you it's the same. HMO is just, it ain't name brand. You basically going to let the insurance come determine everything. All the people wish doctors anywhere in the system. But the bad you sit here, they're going to really be with you. And the HMO ain't trying to spend no money. If you ain't finna die right then, it ain't imperative now. I don't even know why we fooling with it. There's no need even to let him know about it. That's how the John Q situation came up. Y'all familiar with that situation? With the son with the heart? Uh, HMO insurance is what he was under. Had he been on a PPO, they would have told him when his baby was born that there was an irregular heartbeat. His heart was enlarged, which means they could have dealt with it when he was a baby and fixed it. He would have never dealt with it later. But because he was on an HMO, HMO looked at, if he got a large heart, that just means he can love everybody. If more people had a larger heart, they'll do better. See, it's all about the dollar. But you see, these preachers, this one, this one I don't get for me. How I'm looking at now. Wherever you go, and somebody said they for your cause and for you and the betterment of you, they got to tell you everything that's going on around you. So now you can see it. You need to know this. Because, see, as soon as you live here, you're going to fall in the hands of some doctor thinking somebody cares about you. You didn't know you're dealing with a sorcerer. You didn't know these insurance companies you're dealing with don't care about you. They're only going to spend when needed. The PPO and everybody else are going to rip you off, too. And you need to know everybody that's working against you and everybody that's for you. So when a fight breaks out, you say, y'all seen that movie before um, on Bloodsport? When they throw that stuff in old boy, out, oh, oh. Come on. Once he knew the referee won against him, you, now, that referee ran around him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stay back here. I just need to know who fought me. Everybody else against me. That's what I'm trying to teach y'all. Who fought you, dude? He knew keep him right here. I need to keep you. Because anything else come in here now, I'm killing it. That good. But well, black people just damn. We ain't got no time for no van. We ain't got no car. And it's just, damn. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Isn't that right? Come on, 999,825 more. I had like a million of these things. <laughs> what you gonna do you ain't got no car? It's just, damn. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You got to think about it. I'm about to get back. Y'all got to get two off of that. That was pretty good, wasn't it? I don't know how I come up with these. Like, they just like, keep, y'all think get. Thank you. See that? Out of mouth, out of bed, out of perfected praise. Come on, finish this up so I let y'all go. Y'all out of Man, I can't keep messing with y'all. Come on. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon? This is y'all, this is y'all who all three with it, five? Verse four. And verse four. Come on, finish up. And all the coasts of Palestine, uh -huh. will ye render me a recompense? And if you recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Listen. Because you have taken my silver and my gold. Uh oh. See that? What's your luma head? In abundance. See, they've been what? What you think? Think about it. It makes sense. All the nation came because they wanted to see what Shaluma had. Shaluma had abundance. It, it wasn't nothing to him. But see, what you don't realize is something you're in. A lot of stuff y'all think ain't nothing. It ain't the same with your enemy now. That's how you looking at it. All the stuff you got don't look like you're dancing. These white folk come out, they dancing like you now. You so stupid. Go watch these folk that got them down. These folk white now. They nigga pop locking. Spin dance and everything up, dropping that thing up. Do you remember the time? These niggas doing everything now. Stuff you ain't think nothing about. Now you old still behind. All that nigga do that, the robot. <laughs> nigga got arthritis. Nigga move around like R2D2. You in bad shape, man. Cracking on got loose, spinning all off the wall, back flipping. You're in bad shape. Listen. Because you have taken my silver and my gold what happened? and have carried into your temples my ta'u pleasant things. Go to Rome and look in the Vatican and see what they got. That's your stuff in them. 
That stuff in that basement is your stuff. But see, you've been told this. He saw where you kept your good, where you got your treasure. He's taking them and put them now. He took it because he felt like it was, a, it was a sign of protection of him having it. Taking it from you because he looked at you. He wanted to be like you. can't get your skin, so he's going to get your goods. He's stolen your Elohim in his chain. He gave you his God. He gave you Jesus. Nobody know nothing about Jesus. It's Latin for earth pig. What would we be doing with a pig? Huh? When Yahushua found a man who was sitting there, had been breaking himself feathers and chain, couldn't hold a man, the evil spirits asked, could they go in the swine? He said, go. Anybody ain't no damn pigs. Go in them pigs and go down there. Now niggas sitting in pig foot skin. Poke bacon, poke chops, and baby bag real. Man, I said, could have told them things. They even know, they was getting something filthy, disgusting. Part rat, part cat, and part dog. Man, feed you that stuff, then tell you you got an illness. You ought to be ill. A piece of meat that you can take, pour Coca-Cola on it, and worms crawl out of it, and you still eat it. Maggots come out of it. Well, this is what he gave us when we got him. Gave us chitlins. We had never ate that stuff before when he brought it from Africa. Even the people that were not of our nation weren't used to eating that slop. Pork is not big over in Africa. It's big over here. Them pigs come out from Europe. You'll find them more. The wild pair, that junk in Russia, they got pigs this done big. They can eat that junk and still live. We don't eat that mess. Stuff that scrounged and scavenged. He didn't set that for it, people. That's why we dilapidated and bald-headed, blind and ignorant and stupid and dumb and fat. You don't eat no damn pig and you ain't gonna look like one. Aunt, aunt, nigga. Aunt, aunt. Nigga, be like, <laughs> you said, nigga, you got asthma? Someone, <laughs> nigga, going back to pig. Nigga, be like, <laughs> can't give you that stuff, man. They done told a long time ago, you are what you eat. Nigga finna eat something and the thing got a rod shooting dead from the ass out the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling over the with an apple in it. A rat on a stick. I used to eat it. They messed us up. They did. They got them. We didn't think about it. Man, a mess. Of, you know, just, just a fan of I should let our pastor came in and preach today, but he was busy in the office. I said, I just come up here and talk a little bit. Man. He'd probably come next week. He'd come back. He'd be busy. But, you know, it's just the fact that now we just look at all this stuff here did a lot of detriment to us over the years. Come on, bring this up. The children also of Yehuda and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. See that? that? And then we're going to go be with these people. Sold you to the Greek. And then a nigga come around speaking Greek. Every time we got it, Greek. Again, settle up back. As soon as you get in a fraternity, they'll tell you what you got to do. Got to brand you. That's what they did in slavery. You brand animals and you brand people because they profited. Sold up right back to the Greeks. Right here in America, speaking English, and they still sold you to the Greeks. Military, everything they got, all this stuff on the Greeks. Listen. That you might remove them far from their border. See that? Remove them far from their borders. What does happen? Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. Mm -hmm. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Yehuda. You know what's going to happen? Niggas praying now. Dear Lord, please don't let white people be a slave. Not me. I'm not going to line them up. I'm going to tell you how many I want to buy. <laughs> Give me every one of them toothless bastards you got. I want them bastards to eat rocks. Make their gum bleed. Feed them nigga nothing but rocks. Let me buy one of them. In there, I want the toothless one. In there, I give that dirty, dingy, toothless bastard. See, you don't think about stuff like that. This is your Bible, though. This is a book he gave you. Then the man said he's going to sell them back in our hands. You don't want that. You don't pray to Jesus. Tell Jesus, stop it. Listen. And they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a see people that? far off. See, that we're going to sell them back off somebody far off. 
Get him right back over there to Russia. Lynn, listen. For Yahuwah hath spoken it. Uh-oh. What happened? Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty Anus. Mm -mm. Let all the Anus of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. You see what he said? See that? Come out the field now. Now you got to turn around like Nat Turner. Read the book and throw that junk on the ground. How much more, how much more praying you finna do? Man, say he just told that book. Man, just told you your plush. Man, beat that thing into a sword. Not trying to keep horn up no ground. I need to get that whole got me out here beating on me. You don't want to talk about this. This is bad. This is bad in your Bible. Now you ask these Christians, they got this in their Bible. What did this interpretate that for me? He just told the men of war, the noose of water, prepare themselves. What am I telling y'all? Y'all don't do nothing. Y'all just keep praying, keep loving. That's not what you just heard. Now, I got a book in this same mantra. Y'all, the fifth child that said, think not I come to destroy the law other than the bar. He said, I did not come to destroy. I came to fulfill. To Shamaim and the rich, we passed away. Not one, not the smallest tick, the smallest letter said anywhere, uh, stroke said anywhere I from the law to all be fulfilled. Now, tell me when it's done. These Christian niggas don't know what they're doing. Explain me when it's going to be done. It's over with. He just said he finna come. This couldn't have been fulfilled because we still out here soul. Yep. What are they gonna do? How are they fulfilling we still out here slaves? You still scattered from your borders. What well, a man just said, I'm going to come and fetch you. But listen to what he just told you. I just told you to prepare yourself, men of a noose, men of war. Gabar. That's a warrior. He just told a noose to prepare themselves for war. He just told you that you are Gabar. That is the Aberine word for warrior. You are Gabar. That's who we calling for. I'm calling for Gabar. Listen. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say, I am strong. Mm. Come on. Assemble yourselves, and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Yeah. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahuwah. Let the heathen be wakened, and come up to the valley of Yahushaphat. Yeah. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Mm -hmm. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? He just told them, Alama. What he just told you was, Alama. Alama. Which means it is ripe for sex. That's why he told you to thrust in the sickle. The sickle is equivalent to the penis. Okay. That's why he told him to thrust in. When a man is having sex with a woman, he thrusts in her. He told him to thrust in the sickle because he was telling her the time was right. It's all amount. The time is right. That he's going to thrust in the sickle in this place. And you know what's supposed to happen when you thrust in the sickle? Who knows? You're supposed to draw blood. Exactly right. You're supposed to draw blood. So there's no reason for him to tell the men of Gabar to take up plowshares and turn them into sp to spears and then take them and thrust them in and there'll be no blood. Our people don't know. This is why we're in the mess we're in. Because we've been taught from Christian antics and Christian, an Christian antics huh, have played us for a complete fool. You read a book, they have told you it's completely wasteless it's no good. Yeah, every time they teach tithe and offering, they're going to go back to the Old Testament. Convenient. They conveniently go back when they want. I don't know how you can have one without the other. What they call the two New Testament is a non effect if I ain't got the law. I got to have the law. That helps me to understand, understand, and overstand what I'm reading as they call the New Testament. This is all one book. They divide up to make a fool out of you. 
Now, you're going to have to prepare your mind and look. He said that he was going to bring them to the valley of Jehosha, Jehoshaphat. The reason you know that, there, in the valley of Jehoshaphat, is where he took down the nations. When they came to fight against them, he took them down in that valley. That's why it was important for you to know that. Pick me up and see where I got to let them go. Bet on Dabari Hayyamim. See if that's 20 and 15. I'll let y'all go. Tell you what I want. Beth, Daba, Reha, Yamam, 2015. Let's see that what I want. A month. Listen. And he said, Hearken ye, all Yehuda. Back me up at verse 10. Listen. My fact, 21 first, and we'll jump down. Listen. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek Yahuwah and proclaim the fast throughout all Yehuda. Why we ain't done that? It's been a great multitude set to come up against us on the other side of Syria. Syria belonged to us. All these places you read, only knew they showing you a land you belonged to us, Aleppo. Every place they got over there, Palmyra. All these places were cities that Shaluma took. These were treasure cities. Cities that Daoud took. Aleppo, these were cities he took. And yet they don't tell you that. Everybody want to know why they blowing them up, why they destroying them. You who are getting them out of there? I don't feel sorry for no Syria. I feel absolutely nothing for them. No compassion at all for these people. They're sitting in stolen. If somebody break in my house and they get killed, I'm going to be sitting there crying. All I'm asking is, what were you doing in my house? You don't think like that. Go ask these Americans how many folk they cry. If another nation came over here and tried to get American, they kill them. See if white Americans cry for them. They're going to call these people criminals, invaders, intruders, huh? Unwanted people. And they should be killed for intruding and coming in. Well, I look at the same thing with these people. What you doing there? That's not your land. You own Syria, Damascus, Aleppo. You own all of these areas. You own all of Lebanon. Beirut, you own all of it. Sudan, the place he named, they were in Lebanon. All of that is yours. He told you where your border was going to be. These white folk draw the map and then told you lies. These are your land. That's why these places keep being torn up in war. They keep wondering why Beirut, why Lebanon ain't never got settled. Why what's going on in Syria? Because Yahuwah is getting these people out of the land. Now he done told you, you're going to need to prepare yourselves. You've been farming for these people too long. Now turn your stuff into weapons. Time coming. Alamar here. This place about to be right. All right. I'll keep going. Listen. And Yehuda gathered themselves together to ask help of Yehuda. Even out of all the cities of Yehuda came they to seek Yehuda. Listen. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Yehuda and Jerusalem in the house of Yehuda before the new court and said, O Yehuda, Allahim of our Abba, Art now, art not thou Allahim and Shamaim, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? That's what we look at. Come on, son. And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? That's what we're looking at. We can't do our own. Nobody can withstand it. Listen. Art not thou our Allahim, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Yasharal, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. Listen. And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house. Y'all see that? That's what we're doing. We stand before Yahuwah. That's our house. Yahushua is our house. That's our bed. He done told we've been put to the sword come. They gunning us down. That's the sword. That's why they make a bullet with a tilt. That's the edge of the sword. The sword done come on you. We go into court. You know when you go to court for judgment. Well, all the things he tell you is happening to you now. When y'all going to wake up? What are they doing to you the reason they shooting you down? 
That's the sword. They've already became judge and jury. They're giving you judgment. But he said, if we stand, well, son. And in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction. What happened? Then thou wilt hear and help. I'm talking about that. One. I'm talking about. It. Then you'll look at Azara. That means aid. He's going to aid us, not give us aids like these crackers done did. Azara. He's going to aid us. Aid me. I'm going to assist you. But you got to do something for yourself. That's how we think. He gonna come. He gonna fight. And we ain't going to sit up under the tree and eat honey like Wendy Pooh with no drawers on and a red sweater. Nigga, please. Show me no punk that bad ain't got no clothes on. Where that little cracker boy sweater? I know that little boy gave him that sweater. Pooh was a punk. No bell got no bend to being scared. Listen. And now... Behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not Who's let Mount Seir? Esau. Our own brother. All them done rose up against us. Listen. Whom thou wouldest not let Yasharal invade when they came out of the land of Mizraim, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. See that? Moab, our cousin. He wouldn't let us take them down. Ammon, all them related us. Those are the children of Lut. Who they gonna call Lot? He won't let us take him down. He said, "Don't invade him." See, that's what make us mad with these white people. We didn't bother them; they bothered us. We left you alone. We could have been took you out, but we left you alone, and now you done came up against us. Listen. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession. See that? That's up. Come on. Which thou hast given us to inherit. Mm -hmm. O oh, our Allahim, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. That's what we're doing. Listen. And all Yehuda stood before Yahuwah with their little ones, their Nashim, and their children. You said they were sitting down doing what? And all Yehuda stood before Yahuwah. I told you. They know you ain't a threat sitting down. And when you come to court, they tell you to sit down. Have a seat. Take away your defense. Can't fight sitting down. Everybody stood. They were looking at they were finna go to war. They looking at they need help. Nobody gonna help me sitting down. You gotta get on your feet. When he spoke to the Nabal, they were down. He told them, stand upon your feet. Talk no man on their ground, their face down, I bear down there. We get up on your feet. Even Shaluma told you he made man upright. That's why they so I always want to beat you and put you on the ground. He want to humiliate you and disgrace you. He know what Allahim made you to be. Listen. Then upon Jehaziel, the ben of Zechariah, the ben of Benaiah, the ben of Jeel, the ben of Mataniah, a Louis of the ben of Asaph, came the Ruach of Yahuwah in the midst of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And he said, Hearken ye all Yehuda and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. What happened? And thou, Malak Yehoshaphat, listen what happened. Thus saith Yahuwah unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Tell them why, son. For the battle is not yours. The battle is what? Not yours. You say it's not who? Yours. But who? Allahim's. That's why I told you he's going to bring him to the valley of Yehoshaphat. See, this is going to be my fight. There, I'm going to plead with all nations. I'm going to plead with them for taking my gold and my silver. They talking about niggas trivia. Niggas worry about little stuff. He worried about it too. I want my stuff back. Huh? Fred Sanford tried to tell y'all he played Blind Miller Jelly. I want my daddy records. Hmm? That's what I want now, my daddy. My record. I don't need the record. My book is telling me what he say he's going to do. But if I don't know this, I don't know what he tell me he's going to bring him to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Because there I'm going to plead with them. I'm going to contend with them. I'm not going to beg these people. To, there I'm going to deal with them. Every one of these nations that have taken you out of the way, I'm going to deal with them. Huh? They sold my girl for some wine, liquor. They got rid of my boy for a harlot. Huh? They parted my land. That man looked at They took this man's stuff and ripped it up and left him naked. You don't think I'm going to get you for this? 
You don't think you're going to pay for this? They ripped it up and gave it to the soldiers took it. So I already know how you left the land, right? The soldiers came and got you. Well, I'm going to deal with them. Hmm? Y'all got it? That's good. 